What's going on, guys? JSGC here. We're joined by a special guest, Mixed today, making hey. his appearance. Thank you. Uh, I think it's your debut for the season, actually. I think it is first time. It's been a while, aren't it? Because last time I did it was the Man City Champions League final. So hopefully it'll be the same outcome. Three points for City today. I hope so as well. well. Thank you for having me on uh, again, Jay. No problem. Last time we had Aaron was uh, Manchester City winning in Istanbul. Uh, for the Champions League final, June tenth of two thousand and twenty three, and we can't tell we're at the business end of the season. <laughs> He's back again when it gets really interesting. Uh, but today, guys, we are going to be doing the live watch along of Manchester City's away game in the Premier League against Crystal Palace. Uh, before I do crack on with this live watch along, make sure, like always, if you are enjoying the content, then do subscribe to the channel. We're now less than 900 subs away from my aim of 35,000 subscribers. So any help nice. towards that would be much appreciated. Also, don't forget as well, social media links. They're in the description if you want to go and follow me on my Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Email also in the description too if you want to hit me up for any sponsorships for any videos or any general business inquiries. Don't forget, guys, to leave a thumbs up. As always, we're aiming for 100 likes we've made a good start i have to keep appearing my camera's perfectly in the way of how many likes we're on we're on 30 likes which means we're uh three tenths of our way to our like goal and the stream's only just started so that's a magnificent effort 70 likes to go so if you're watching this please do leave a thumbs up also don't forget as well uh to uh leave your thoughts in the live chat that would be much appreciated we've got dave in the live chat welcome dave thanks for tuning in said should be as straightforward for city uh, as it was for Wire at Leeds last night. Best of luck to you. Uh, anyone wondering and wanting a translation there, Wire is Warrington. And Dave's on about the Rugby League there with uh. Warrington at Leeds last night. And thank you very much, Dave, for tuning in once more. Much appreciated. Dudley, thanks for tuning in. Much appreciated. Good afternoon to you and welcome. Matty, thanks for tuning in. Getting in a nice early score prediction going for 3-1 to Manchester City. And hopefully uh, looking for a stress-free game, which would be... Be absolutely brilliant. Uh, Anthony, thanks for tuning in. Says, interesting lineup. What am I thinking? I'm going to speak more about the lineup in just one moment. I'll be getting my teeth into Phil Foden, fresh from scoring a hat trick, not starting today. Really? Dad, really, really. Wow, Dad, call. thanks for tuning in. Much appreciated. Uh, Raheem going for a 4 0 victory for Manchester City. The creator going for a 5 0 victory to uh, Manchester City. Jordy, thanks for tuning in. Going for a 3 0 victory for City and says, Away the lad. Uh, Dad, you was also there. Dude, for was, Istanbul. Yes. So Certainly said was. Yeah, had to, yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, Rene, thanks day. for tuning in. Much appreciated. Says, how am I? I'm very well. How are you, Aaron? I'm very good, thank you. How, how are you? you? Uh, and yes, there's a new subscriber. Much appreciated. Thanks for tuning in. As always, everybody is welcome here on the JSGC channel. And Rene, I can tell from your badge that you are a Leicester City fan. Uh, are they going to get promoted? It's getting <laughs> very tense. You're jittering, boy. You're jittering. It's getting very tense the at the top. at the minute, yeah. They are they third. are the third. The third but we've got Ipswich, a game in hand, yes. It's switching Leeds having a very good season so far. Uh sitting in at the top two with Southampton, just a little bit trailing off uh, yeah. in fourth place. Um someone Potentially two teams will go left. Very disappointed in the championship, very competitive at the top end of the championship. So we're going to speak about Manchester City. We're going to speak about the top of the Premier League, the permutations and the, the fact that if Manchester City win today, Arsenal have got to win away at Brighton later on tonight. Not easy. Not easy at all. And Arsenal, uh, sorry, Liverpool have got to go and win away tomorrow at Manchester United. Not easy. Three huge away games for the top three in the Premier League. Manchester City, most importantly are going first. I've been very critical of the fact that Manchester City's schedule is relentless. We're going to be playing uh, four football matches in nine days, which is absolutely ridiculous. It's like the Premier League don't want Manchester City to win the Premier League and they don't want us to do well in the Champions League, so we're going to try and make things as difficult as possible. But it keeps the games flowing and if City can hit their stride, they can really hit their stride and take momentum going forward. And most importantly for this weekend, we're playing before Arsenal and we're playing before Liverpool, which means we've got a chance to play catch-up on goal difference. We've got a chance to get big three points here, to go above Arsenal, to put pressure on to Liverpool. Potentially, Manchester City could go top is what we're looking at. But we, we we need... Can we go top? Am I getting that mixed up? Let me have a look at the uh, league table. Uh, what's the goal difference you need? 
Uh, just having a look at the league table. It's Liverpool that sit top. Yeah, so we can go top today with a comfortable win. We're yeah. uh, plus four behind Liverpool on goal difference. So a win for City by four goals or more today uh, will send us top of the Premier League. And that puts uh, a load of pressure onto Arsenal because they're going to be two points behind City with a City win today. It means they can't afford a draw against Brighton. They've got to go to Brighton and win. And Liverpool are going to need to go to Old Trafford and get a result. And let's not forget, Manchester United took a result off Liverpool in the FA Cup a few weeks back um, and also ended up after extra time beating them. So a bit of uh, uh, psychological advantage maybe for Manchester United. I think Liverpool may want a bit of revenge. What are your thoughts on them games, Aaron? Yeah. What, what are you thinking? What are you thinking for this game first? 3-1 City. That's my score prediction I'll put out there. 3-1 City, but we'll see if... Holmstein. So give me your lineup. I'm not too I'll sure. I'll go through lineup. the lineup. So uh, today's video sponsor brought to you by Sofa Score. Uh, links and details they are in the description. Just go very quickly. Roll my promo video, and I'll speak more about Sofa Score, and we'll speak about the teams. Thank you very much there to SofaScore for sponsoring today's video. Uh, do go and check them out. Links are in the description. You can use the QR code on screen. Uh, you can also use the link in the live chat to go and check out SofaScore. It is a free app to download. They're going to keep you up to date with all the latest scores from around the grounds. They're helping me to provide my pre-match, half-time and full-time analysis for you guys to enjoy. Uh, they've also got other later scores from around the grounds as well. Uh, so I've got the Manchester City game locked and loaded right here against Crystal Palace. I'm going for uh, an away win today. 81% of SofaScore users think that Manchester City are winning today. 11% going for a draw and 8% going with a Crystal Palace uh, win. Interesting uh, because uh, just on the homepage of the game, I get information such as the referee, Paul Tierney uh, taking charge of this game. I've got the latest form. Uh, I've got where the teams currently stand in the league table. City in third, Crystal Palace in 14th. So it's all locked and loaded in one place. But my favourite feature of SofaScore is you can select different sports. So it's all in one app. I don't have to keep going to different apps to find the yeah. different scores of all the sports that I like to follow. Uh, any regulars on here know that I am a huge cricket fan. And uh, I am a huge uh, Lancashire fan. Uh, and I know that Lancashire are currently in cricket action, so I can just use the same app to tick over to see how are Lancashire getting on. And at the it's moment, <laughs> it's interrupted because <laughs> rain, <laughs> because of rain, and uh, the That's, outfield yeah. is soaked. So That's what I hate about playing. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Not much to update on there, but yeah, it's all in one place. Uh, you're going to follow the latest dart scores, NFL, uh, rugby union. Cricket, any of your sports, it's all there in one place. Free app to download, do go and check it out. So, today's lineups will start with our opponents first. Crystal Palace got a, a whopping um, first 11 average age of just under 28 years old, so a lot of experience there. They're starting with a 3 4 3 formation uh, with Dean Henderson in goal, They're going with a back three of Captain Joel Ward, uh, Joaquim Anderson, and Jefferson Lerma. They've gone with Munoz as their right wing back and Tyreek Mitchell as their left wing back with Wharton and Will Hughes as their two central midfielders. It is Matata starting up top with Jordan Ayew on the left-hand side and Ebrecheze starts on the right-hand side. Uh, for Crystal Palace on the bench, they've got Remy Matthews, James Tompkins, Nathaniel Klein, Jeffrey Schlupp, uh, David Ozar, Michael Olise, uh, uh, Amar Ahamada, hope I've said his name correctly there, Franco Ume, and also Odson Edouard. Edouard, clearly not fit enough to be starting in this game, and uh, Olise's only just come back from injury, hence he's not starting, but some good options there for Palace on the bench. Nonetheless, they're led by manager Oliver Glasner, and funny fact, uh, I don't think the Crystal Palace fans are too happy with his appointment. Uh, I saw on Twitter, and this really made me laugh, someone said, I have got a new chant for Crystal Palace. It it goes along the lines of, we want Oliver Glasner out. We want Oliver Glasner out. We want Oliver Glasner out. That's the chant. <laughs> 
So that's the thoughts yeah. of the Crystal Palace fans and where they stand. Uh, at the moment, it looks like they're, they're going to survive. They're going to be safe. They're on 30 points. They're eight points clear of Luton Town with a game Did in hand, seven wins. games to play. Yeah. They're needing a couple of wins. It's a little bit more difficult for Palace because they know they've got City uh, today and then Liverpool away in their next mm. game. So a couple of difficult games. All of a sudden, it becomes if they lose both then games, which on paper yeah. you think that they would, all of a sudden it becomes six games to play. And if Luton make any games, it gets more and more difficult. So not safe yet, but at the moment, in a good position as far as I am concerned. So your Manchester City starting 11 for today is... City starting with Stefan Ortega in goal. Yeah. We're going with a back four of Rico Lewis, John Stones, Ruben Diaz, recently single, and Yoshko Gavardio. <laughs> <laughs> Like we, he got that out. <laughs> well, he got his partner. He had a dip in form. He's binned her off, and now he's finding his form again. Recently, single Ruben Diaz. We've also got in midfield Rodri, Kevin De Bruyne, captain in Manchester City today, uh, and Julian Alvarez playing behind striker Erling Haaland. Oscar Bob given the nod, which is great to nice. see. He's been in really good form with Norway during the uh, international break, and we're also starting with Jack Grealish on the left wing. City's average age is t- just over twenty. 26 years old, uh, going with a 4-1-4-1 formation. I suspect Gavardio's going to be given a bit more freedom to push into that left wing, which may allow Jack Grealish to cut inside, so it'll look more like a, a back... I reckon today, Rico Lewis starts, he'll go into midfield. It's probably going to be more of a back two rather than a back three. Uh, John Stones will sit back along with Ruben Diaz. It'll be interesting to see, actually, if City choose to send Gavardio forward or Lewis forward. If one stays back or uh, both stay back or both go forward, does Rodri then drop deeper? Because one of the main outlets I thought City had in our match against Aston Villa and what worked so well was, was giving more freedom uh, to Rodri in midfield to get forward. He comes away with a goal, he causes problems for uh, the midfield. He overruns Aston Villa's midfield. He shows all of his experience. And Manchester City knew that it was just all about creating opportunities and putting the ball into the back of the net, which takes us on to the biggest talking point that we've got. The man that was in form finding them goals against Aston Villa was Philip Walter Foden. He scored a hat-trick. And he's on the bench today. City's bench today is Edison, which means he will be starting against Real Madrid on Tuesday night. Akanji, he'll be starting against Madrid. Bernardo Silva will be starting against Real Madrid. So getting a bit of rest there, so I can understand why the bit of rotation is in place there. Uh, Sergio Gomez, Kovacic, Chisouo, Nunes, Doku. I'm wondering if he's maybe just given a bit of a rest that... We may anticipate that Real Madrid are going to attack us at the Bernabeu because they're going to need to beat us to be put into a strong position in the Champions League that City may be thinking yeah. about the counter-attack. That's what I'm thinking as well. I think I like it, especially against... Because Real Madrid could go all out of guns blazing against you. So you've They've got the counter. It's nice They've and fast. It can hit him on the counter. you got, of course, the main man himself, Phil Foden. Yeah, and I think City are just keeping one eye on Real Madrid here. Yes. They've gone with a strong team, but I think they're strong just teams are very attacking one eye. Well. Um, I'm going 3-1 City. What's your prediction, Aaron? I went 3-1 before as well. 3-1. I, I think, think both 3-1. teams to score out. I can see Crystal Palace scoring a goal. I'm hoping, this is one of them games, I'm yeah. hoping by half-time we'll have the game done so you can start thinking about Real Madrid. I'm hoping today Holland to get his scoring oh. uh, feet back. He needs Imagine to. Imagine that, a hat-trick today. He needs to. We, we, we need Haaland in form as yeah. far as I'm concerned. It's a business uh, end. So yeah. You need to find your form now. Show what Man City, what yours do. You come to business end. And do what you do, get the business done, and mm. see if you can get the fourth Premier League title consecutive and break history. It will be very difficult to do with the position that we are in. The only it way is, we can do it, hands, I, I think, is we've got to win every game yes. between now and the end of the season. I think any drop of points, I just can't see Liverpool and Arsenal. And that's the difficult part here. It's not a two-horse race, it's a three-horse race. We're not just relying on one team and keeping an eye on what one team are doing. Oh, no. We've now got to keep an eye on what Arsenal and what Liverpool are doing. I'm not going to sit here and say I think I think they're both brilliant teams, but I'm not going to sit here and say I think that both them teams are unbeatable, that they're not going to drop points because they're unplayable. I don't think that that is the case. I think Liverpool... Uh, are beatable. I think Arsenal are beatable. Yeah. I just think the the focus of these teams at this business end of the season, they'll, they'll be thinking all about the Premier League. Just them uh, Arsenal, though, it's complicated. Brighton away today. Uh, Bayern Munich Tuesday night at the Emirates Stadium. Yeah, it's still in Champions League, and Liverpool are still in, Europa in the Europa League. League and I, I am amazed that I'm Liverpool that have not just it. gone reserve team Europa League. We don't want yeah. that. We want the Premier it's League. The same but... with Arsenal, I'm a little bit surprised. 
Well, but it's a Champions League. Isn't it? It, 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 it's yeah, but Arsenal have got to look at it as realistically, will they beat Bayern Munich and Real Madrid or Manchester City? They've got the more difficult end. You want to get to the quarterfinal, you want to have a look at the draw. And when you look yeah. at the draw, you want to then assess: Are we capable of doing both? And I don't think Arsenal. I don't got think Arsenal's got that, that depth. depth. Yeah, and I think that's where the complication. That's where my doubts casting. That's where my doubts casting last season. It only takes one bad result, and I think Arsenal just start to dip, and they've they've not proven to me yet. They've got that mental strength yet? That they've got what it takes to win the big trophies, and they weren't miles away last season. And I think this season, and a focused Arsenal right now, I think potentially would go on to win the league. But I can only assess on what I see. And in the Champions League, I don't think they're strong enough to win it. And I was looking at Arsenal against City at the Etihad yeah. Stadium. And if I want to sit here and I want to say I think that they're going to win the league, I think they needed to come to the Etihad and beat us. As I said before, I was still surprised they didn't have a go or at least go they for the part counter. part the bus, didn't they? They didn't go for the counter even to try they and get They didn't do anything. Win. They just they were happy. They celebrated like they'd won they the league with their nil-nil at the Etihad. Before that game, the title was in Arsenal's hands. This top of the league, yes. After the game, it's only in Liverpool's hands, yet they celebrated it like they'd won the league. Yeah. And people were getting lost in, oh, it's a really good result it for Arsenal. Result, it's but... a great result for Arsenal. But I don't think it was enough. It's just like our result at Anfield. We needed to win at Anfield. Yeah. We got a draw. It was a really good result. But it weren't enough. No. It weren't enough. But that's why I'm disappointed with City. You've not beaten either Arsenal or Liverpool in the Premier League. Oh, apart from the bit in the big six, apart from Manchester United, you've not beaten anyone. <laughs> that's why we are where we are. <laughs> what do you think about it? It's so incredible that you're in the title one. <laughs> Uh, Man City, have, I think this season, have uh, managed to, in particular since December, I think found the feet really nicely. And I think that's helped yeah. aid City to push us uh, to be in a position where we can still win the league. I do feel like we're on last chance saloon. It was nine games, nine wins needed against Villa. We've yeah. won that game. It's now eight games to go and eight wins needed to win the league. I think, excuse me, anything less... I don't think we will win the league. I just don't see that many points being it's dropped. It's got to be maximum, 91 points. I think, though, this weekend's it huge. I think if City win today, I think Arsenal and or Liverpool drop points this weekend. I really do. I think if City drop points today, I think Arsenal win later on today. I think Liverpool go on and win tomorrow at Manchester United as well. We've got players coming out of the tunnel, so I'm just quickly going to dip into the chat. Jamie, thanks for tuning in. Says, do I like it more as a two-team title race or have you enjoyed this three-team battle more? Uh, this free, free one's been it's entertaining. Yeah. It makes things very uh, interesting. It's like you said, because it makes it more interesting. That's why you're still in the title one, because there's three teams going at it. Yes. So the points total is a little bit lower this year. Yeah. It should be. It, it's entertaining. It's, it's, I'm looking forward to it. As If City can win all the games between now and the end of the season, yeah. it should make it a really good, from our point of view anyway, a good entertaining um And if that's not enough, title it's not challenge. enough. But if you can do your bit, win all your games, see what it takes you. Yeah. Jordy says he's going to be watching the East Anglian derby. It is. Uh, which is the East Anglian derby, yeah. Is it at Norwich? Is it Norwich, yes. It is at Norwich, yeah. I remember we were speaking to a couple of the... When we went to Norwich uh, earlier oh, in the season. We've both, haven't we? Yeah, we were we're, when we were speaking to some of the Norwich fans, though, uh, they were saying that uh, weekend after they had Ipswich, and that yeah. was away from home, so it'll be at Carrow Road today. Uh, Seamus, thanks for tuning in. Says, Pep thinking of the Madrid game, leaving some of the players on the bench. I, personally, if it was me, would have kept the same team that beat Aston Villa. It was so fluent. It was... Uh, it's one of the best performances I've seen from City so far this season which just attacking yeah. and looking to score goals and I think that's when City are at their very best as far as I'm concerned uh, so it's I understand why we've made them changes yeah something clear you looked a lot better it's more like the Man City of all like that but it's a lot better because Alvarez he brings because works more for false nine brings the entire team you look more fluid and you look more comfortable it allows more freedom yeah Erling Haaland wants to be the last player leading that line. Erling Haaland wants to be the player around the six-yard box. Yes. Erling Haaland wants to be the player scoring goals. He wants to be the man scoring hat-tricks. Um, I've only seen, I think once, whilst we've had Haaland, I've seen somebody else score a hat-trick, correct me if I'm wrong, and that was Phil Foden in the derby, when ha Erling Haaland also scored a hat-trick that day. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
And you've got to realise it's not all about... I'm not saying Erling Haaland's a bad player. I'm just saying it's not the Erling Haaland show. What we want to see is Man City as a team playing really well. And uh, Erling Haaland's a huge name. He's a brilliant goal scorer. Uh, he's, he's a player, I think, that we need to try and find a way to get the very best out of him. And last season, I thought we found he a did. really good yeah. balance. This season... Not so much since we've tinkered with the tactics. And the tinkering of the tactics, I think, we're asking more of the players. And I think City have spent big in the summer. Players like Gavardi will be brought in. City want to find a way to, to get these uh, defensive players, uh, get them more into midfield and, and find a way for it to work. Uh, we've assessed the left-hand side. We'll be looking at the right-hand side, I suspect, in the summer. And they'll be looking for more players to suit the system. So, um I mean, I've said before, if you want to trial a new tactic, I'd be I'd be tempted for City to to go with two up top, two strikers leading the line. It does be interesting like that. But they've seemed to be obsessed when we play Alvarez and Haaland Alvarez to ask behind, Alvarez yeah. to be a midfielder, and Alvarez isn't a midfielder. He's a striker. Watch Argentina play. Julian Alvarez isn't doing what he's doing for Man City for Argentina, and Argentina get the very best out of him. Why? Because he's playing as a striker. Yeah, he's playing second fiddle to Lionel Messi. Everyone's going to be playing second fiddle to Lionel Messi. Just like with Erling Haaland, everyone's going to be playing second fiddle to Erling Haaland. He's world class. But you've got a fantastic option there that you can utilise. Yeah. So I'm hoping today it will be more of an Alvarez as a striker rather than Alvarez acting as a central midfielder. Uh, because when you've got Alvarez acting as a central midfielder, I don't think Palace have got the quality. They're a good team, but I don't think they've got the midfield quality to expose that. But a team that does have that is Real Madrid on Tuesday night. I don't want to be seeing it on Tuesday night as far as I'm concerned. That's why I would have liked Haaland to start against Real Madrid to go for fast. So Someone to hit Real Madrid on the count. That's what Haaland loves. He loves going behind the defence, especially like with Doku as well running behind. Well, it looks like it's going to be Doku starting. Uh, Erling Haaland's going to be starting, you'd suspect. I mean, they've got to be starting Phil Foden and Kevin De Bruyne. Uh, I presume Jack Grealish for a bit of control is probably going to be starting that game yeah. as well. But we're getting too far ahead. Crystal Palace, that's what we need to be thinking it's about. That's how time. we win. One that's how you win the league. You don't think about your next game. You think about who you're playing right now. Anthony, thanks for tuning in. Going for a 3-1 City win. Dad, going for a 3-2 Manchester Ooh. City win. Get your score predictions in. Rene, going for a 4-0 City win. Hoping for an Arsenal loss. That would be, so uh, that'd be, that'd be good. Uh, Rene says, happy with uh, Enzo. Manager over at uh, Enzo Maresca, that yep. is. Manager at... Uh, Leicester City, City's assistant manager from last season. He's done a pretty good job. I think the Leicester fans, some of them have been pretty frustrated with his style of play. Accused him of being boring. Uh, I think Leicester are expecting yeah. maybe to fly that league. Championship, it's a difficult league to go it and is. do. It's funny. Business said yeah. they cracks him in Leicester difficult. are cracking. It is difficult. Uh, apologies if I've missed anyone. John, thanks for tuning in. Philip, thanks for tuning in. Says respect for Aaron there. Tuning in. Cheers, Philip. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Jamie says, what is the worst feeling watching your title rivals drawing with 20 minutes left or watching your own team drawing with 20... Oh, my own team. Own team. My yeah, own team. I totally agree. It's yeah. a press of it is. It's your own team. I look at... I watch, I don't, I'll watch. i be honest, I don't yeah. even watch Arsenal and Liverpool. My expectation is they are going yeah. to win that game. That's my expectation. Um... I may have a watch of, I'm out tonight, so I'm not going to be able to watch the Arsenal game. I'll definitely be watching the um, Man United-Liverpool game. I'm not watching it in expectation that United take something. I'm watching more in hope. I'm hoping yeah. it'll be a good game because the FA Cup game that they played was a pretty good game, uh, I thought. So, there we go. Manchester City fan going for a 4-1 Manchester City win. I'll get back to the chat in just one second because we do have kickoff, kick-off. ready here. Uh, players have made their way out of the tunnel. Uh, they've made their way onto the pitch. And we do have kickoff here with Crystal Palace nearly getting us underway. Referees decided to stop the play. And now they're ready to go. So, we got there. There we go. <laughs> we got there. We do have kickoff now as Crystal Palace get us underway, attacking from right to left with Manchester City attacking from left to right. Crystal Palace playing in their normal colours of the red and blue uh, patterned shirt with uh, navy blue shirts, uh, shorts and socks. Manchester City to today playing in their away kit, which is the white shirts, yeah. uh, burgundy shorts and white socks. I'm not keen on your kit. Um... I'll be honest, I don't think any of the City kits this season are any of my favourites. Last season, I think they've got them spot on. I really like the home. This is the away one. I like yeah. the away one. I like the home one as well. But they've got them spot on. I'm not too keen on uh, this season's kits. And I've seen a couple of the leaks for next season's kits. And I'm not too Ooh, keen on them either. On either. No. That's just me, though. Yeah. It's all about acquired taste. I'll be honest, 
I feel like I'm getting to a point where football shirts just are. I mean, I wear them for the live streams. Just, <laughs> I, yeah. I just wear them just to let people know that I'm a Manchester City fan and I'm yeah. cheering on Manchester City. When it comes to casual day-to-day stuff, I just don't wear football shirts. <laughs> I feel like I'm too old. And never do I, unless I'm a bro like that. I like collecting that team's uh, tops. Because mm. I couldn't tell the last time I actually bought a Preston top. Yeah. Is City getting forward then? Here's De Bruyne looks to try and square a ball Manchester across. City. And uh, Manchester City have a corner. Uh, Andy and Alison, thanks for tuning in. Yeah, thank you. Says, uh, just logged in, kept me up to date, guys. He's on his drive. Oh, he's making his drive to uh, North Yorkshire. Oh, very nice. To Helmsley. So, uh, hopefully, a nice, safe drive for you and have a lovely time. Says, come on, City. Uh, Rene and Anthony talking yeah. about Bayern Munich's game against Arsenal. <laughs> Rene going for a, a whopping 9 0 win for Bayern. <laughs> Bayern just haven't hit the stride. Harry Kane, that should be interesting. It's a shame they're playing on the same night as City. Corner comes in from De Bruyne. Header comes in from uh, towards Haaland. Uh, Good defending that from Palace, to be fair. Here's Alvarez. Thought he might have put a ball in there. He doesn't. Goes to De Bruyne. De Bruyne Bruyne does put a ball in. Doesn't beat the first man. Headed clear by Palace. Loose second ball picked up by Manchester City. Rico Lewis just works it back to Rodri. And he'll work it back to Ortega Ortega Moreno. Um, yeah, I'm not too short to make that buying game. I'd like, I'd love to have a watch of it, but I'm not going to be able to watch it because City Where's playing Andrew, Madrid. That one? The is first leg in, is at Germany? the uh, Emirates. Second leg is in Germany, so Arsenal need oh, to right, win Emirates. that game. They need, yeah, need, need to win to that game. I don't think there's any buying fans. I think they've got a, a they've stadium got a ban, there? stadium yeah, ban, one game ban. stadium ban for chucking flares on the pitch <laughs> from their game against Lazio. <laughs> don't you just love it? Love it. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. Uh, anyway, uh, go back uh, to the chat. Abu, yeah. thanks for tuning in. Much appreciated. Oh, I missed one, actually. Uh, we need Norwich to win against Ipswich. As a Preston fan, Rene, I need uh, Ipswich to beat Norwich. I want Ipswich to come up. I think there'll be a nice refreshing change. I think they do, but from... Some... Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa, whoa. Palace are in here. They're Chats. in here. And in. Hey, 1-0 Crystal Palace. That's a, that's a brilliant finish off the inside of the post. City just counter-attacked upon. It's a disastrous start here. It's a cracking finish, though. I think it's Mateta that scored the goal there for Crystal Palace. It's a lovely finish into the back of the net. City caught by surprise. He just goes across the keeper. He finds the inside of the post. Pep Guardiola that not happy. Says it all. I take nothing away from Palace and that finish. It's a lovely counter-attack goal and finish into the back of the net. So City just giving the ball away. Two passes around the lines. John Stone's done for pace. I'm sorry, I think John Stone's has to take a tactical foul there. It's Stone that gives it away as well. I think John Stone's has to take a tactical foul high up the pitch. I don't think he'd be sent off. It's a certain yellow. I don't think he'd have been red carded for it. Not that early in the game and that far away from goal. I think you've got to be aware of the situation there. And John Stone's isn't aware of that situation. Uh, It's a lovely, lovely finish. But that is a really bad goal to concede from Manchester City. Give away possession cheaply. Four stones. minutes in as well. Then, like you said, he doesn't do the tactical foul. Allows him to get the break. And nice little finish. Palace Panda, thanks for tuning in. Shea, We're still plenty of time. In. Jay's got to say, playing positive. You've got eight, six minutes to turn this around. Julia, thanks for tuning in. Much appreciated. Uh, Alistair, thanks for tuning in. Much appreciated as well. Uh, yeah, not a great start. Anyway, guys, we're nearly at 50 likes. We're now just uh, four likes away, 54 yeah. likes away from 100 likes. Do go and check uh, today's video sponsor, Sofa Score Out. Links and details there in the description. Uh, and please do subscribe as well. But yeah, Joe, talk to me about that goal. What is your thoughts then as a Manchester City fan watching that back? Terrible defending. Terrible giveaway. Poor from John Stones. Poor reading of the game. Yeah. Uh, you've allowed Crystal Palace four minutes in to create an opportunity. We've allowed, more importantly, Crystal Palace something to sit on. They're going to park the bus. Yeah, you need a goal before half time. So I think City need yeah. a goal soon. I think next five minutes, City need a goal because we're going to struggle this afternoon yeah, if we don't. It's you've struggled with this season, isn't it? With the parking of the buses once more. Mm. Set piece here for City, though. Chance to put a ball into the box. And I speak all the time on my streams about the importance of set pieces. Quality ball into the box. De Bruyne puts the ball in. It's just fisted out for a a corner. Palace Panda going for a 4-2 win uh, for Manchester City. I'd be more than happy with that right now. 
City to dust themselves down and uh, just try and it's settle, down, try and settle in. Yeah. They, they, as I said, what's going to happen here is Palace are going to sit. They're going to wait for the counter attack. I mean, Palace has showed more attacking intent in three minutes than Arsenal did against us. <laughs> yeah, is <laughs> uh, Kevin De Bruyne whips a ball in and oh, there's a free header for Yoshko Gavardil into better. the stands. <sighs> It's not an easy ground to come to. It's, this is a difficult away match. It's not an easy match to come to. It, it, we've made it even more difficult for ourselves that we'd give them something. Yeah. The one of these teams, they've been a little bit of a bogey to you, even at the Etihad. They're a little bit one of those teams that are a pain in the arse. They took a point off us yes. earlier in the season. Uh, Rene, no, I don't play EAFC. Is that the new name for FIFA? It is, yeah. Yeah, no. I've not played it in. I've not played it in absolutely years. donks. I think as you get older, you just grow out of it, truthfully. Yeah. Mm. I mean, I don't think Ortega could do anything about the goal. No, it's because there's nothing he could do. It's because it's off the post. And... I mean, it's just a good finish. Yeah. It, it takes a chance on the inside of the post. It could easily have gone wrong. It would have wrong. been interesting if it was Edison how far out he would have came. And here's Palace. There's again. a four on two here. There's a four on two. Poor ball. A poor, poor pass. Helps Manchester City there. We've got to be so wary of this counter-attack. And this is just it. Against Aston Villa, it was a back three for City that worked really well. Here, go we've gone back four. to this back... It's it's a four, but it, it when City get forward, it's yeah. just... You're left with two at the back. We're exposed. John Stones is exposed. Uh, Gavardial's exposed. Ruben Diaz is exposed. Yeah. It just doesn't link. It doesn't work. I mean, we're only seven minutes in and even I can see it. And we speak about City need to find an equaliser. We need to be wary not to go 2-0 behind. Wayward passing. Yeah, because a better team would have finished that, then. It's that poor pass towards Eze, uh, towards Eze that caused the problems there. I don't think I'd get on with that. Munro does. Only giving away here. And City need to make it count. Here's it Jackie is. G. Got the option of Rodri. Palace got the tail between the legs here. They're the pressing City and forcing City. There will come a point where they'll City get control where, yeah. in this game and then Palace will sit deep and that's well, where the problem comes. They'll start sitting comes. back and they'll start doing the low block. Yeah. We're now two likes away from 50 likes. And nice thought that'd be great. Yeah, continue. continue it. Although right now, as a City fan, there's nothing really to like about this. <laughs> Not in the minute. No, as I can hear the bells ringing in Liverpool and London in the minute. Right. We need to do something. Yeah, here is De Bruyne. That's a... We're eight minutes in and I'm getting frustrated. Poor giveaways. Poor passing. I mean, De Bruyne's looked so leggy since he's come back from injury. It's understandable. It's understandable. I did speak it's about... It's one of those. Would I have played him, though? No, coming straight back into it. I just think he's ageing. He's had a serious injury. So you said he's 34 coming up? 33 in the summer. Oscar Bob finds Rico Lewis. That's a great Good pass. Ball. Finds Alvarez. Shall Goes across it? the keeper. And oh, oh, really I thought unlucky. it was going to be an own goal. It's, in the end, ricochets away from goal. I think it was... Uh, was it Ward that got his foot onto that? Yeah. So that could have gone anywhere then. It could have gone anywhere. It's good play from City. Nice little ball. Kept though. themselves on side there as well. Good work from Alvarez. Goes for the shot. Keeper makes the save. Uh, could have fell anywhere. It's better from City. Is De Bruyne to Grealish? I respect Palace. They're having a good pop. The giving City space is the danger. You've got to find that balance. Yeah. I'm surprised with Palace, but I do respect it that they've had a pop. They've had a pop, they've had a counter-attack, they've yeah. pressed and they've come forward. And they're pressing well as well. They could easily have just scored and then sat with everybody behind the ball. They have currently got everybody behind the ball, but what I'm saying is that they're pressing and trying to hurt Manchester City. The cowan, that's the there is ball. space. Alvarez. Alvarez has a shot blocked. Rodri, somehow uh, an interception doesn't come in from Palace and De Bruyne has found... A ball into the box and headed clear and Rodri has a well, shot. And, oh, save. it's a That's great save great from save Henderson. There. It's a brilliant save low down. I don't know how Rodri gets such a good effort away on goal there. It is because that's not an easy ball to control there. Uh, he slips. 
It's going towards the bottom it's corner. In, it's a great save from Henderson. Pains me to say, but it's a really good save. Alvarez on set piece duty. Well, it's more like short. Sit, that's what I want to see. Is Oscar Bob? Oscar Bob 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 gives it to De Bruyne, puts the ball in, headed clear. Loose second ball falls to Jack Grealish on the edge of the penalty area. Rico Lewis wants it. John, nice and positive, says, no doubt City will win this game. I hope so. Palace should get their foot on this and get this clear to De Bruyne. Give it away. Gives it to Haaland. His poor pass leads to an interception for so Palace on the Harland, given away again. Like I say, you can tell he doesn't have that technicality, you know, controlling mm. the ball. World-class finisher, but when you're trying to control the ball, no. Mm. The last place I want the ball is at Erling Haaland's yeah. feet. That's why I want Haaland. I want him running through like that. That's yeah. why he's best now. You want him running onto the ball. Yeah. Because that's where Alvarez, like I said, we're having this discussion, yeah. weren't we? I've, I've had it many like, times. He's so much better, so much more comfortable on the ball. He's more technically gifted than yeah. Haaland. Haaland's just a better finisher. Gavardio goes low. I mean, I've... Some of you guys may disagree with when I say this, but I said it at the time when we was after Harry Kane. Harry Kane had a suited City down to the ground. He's a wonderful football player. He's a brilliant finisher of the football. Uh, his passing's very good. His uh, ability to drop into a shape and drop into that nine position's very good. I've seen it when Spurs played against City. He used to drop deep, ping balls over the top for Hyung Min Son to put in the back of the net. So it's one player I want to see your club that you never, ever got. Shun Min Sun, yeah. uh, he's way too settled in North London. Don't yeah, see him leaving any time soon. I feel soon. like he's wasted his career like that. Not winning things. Not winning things, yeah. As a it's player like that deserves so much more. Falls nice list to De Bruyne. He has a shot! Oh! Oh! What a goal! KDB! Come on! What a finish! Oh, there you are, question KDB. He's still got it. Long head KDB, the world's not ready. <laughs> that is a cracking finish. Oh, what a response. Just what Manchester City needed, especially after going behind. King Kevin, it bounces back. That is a finish. And a Absolute half. brilliance. So the ball just falls nicely to De Bruyne from a pullback from nice Grealish. Turn. It falls wow. nicely oh. and it's, it's great. That is goal of the day. Pick what a finish. There. And do you Bow. know what? Henderson made a couple of good saves already. He's looked in brilliant form. It's going to take something no keeping, special yeah, no to beat him. Yeah, no keeping the world saves that. The lady's face in the background in the palace stand says it all there. She was yeah. like, "Woo! what a finish. Oh. Mesmerising. Here come Palace then. City, need to continue going here. It's Great. Been a good game, this. Good game, yeah. It's a good say, game. Surprise. But we did say both teams score. Less than 15 in. We've got two goals. One all here. Palace are coming forward. Whew. That was a finish. Oh, well, love it, not? That was a great finish. It's what I like about Rodri. Like, I know, like, the screamers. Like, yeah. Like, when you know, Palace go early here. Oh, where they can control it. Okay. Out for a throw into City. That was a finish. Anyway, guys, don't forget, leave a thumbs up. We are now just one like away from 50 likes. Uh, we're aiming for 100. Any help towards that would be much appreciated. Do subscribe if you're new around here. And do check out today's yeah. video sponsor, SofaScore. Links and details, they are in the description. That is gold is a thing of beauty from KDB. Just so much power and the bend on it. It's a brilliant goal. What a finish from KDB. How dare we question Kevin De Bruyne? How oh, dare we? Is he finished? Not one bit. <laughs> it's just, that's just oh, it that's with Kevin De Bruyne. He's always had that in his locker that oh, yeah. sometimes he might not have a very good game, but he always has that one moment of yeah. brilliance that he can go out there and just find that pass or that goal. And that's what KDB has. I'm lucky we're pressing North End like our play. We've got a lonely Miller. Even when they're having a bad game, I'd rather those players stayed on because they've got that in their locker. They've got that just that little bit of quality. You want that little bit of quality yeah. that you need. Good show of strength from Alvarez. Good work from Will Hughes to find the pass from that show of strength from uh, Julian Alvarez. Wayward pass comes in. 
and that goes out of play for a uh, goal kick. Now, what makes me laugh is John Stones was just getting a bit of abuse from the Crystal Palace Ultras behind the goal. <laughs> yeah, in uh, two months' time, the same Crystal Palace fans will be singing John Stones' <laughs> praises at the European yeah. Championships for England. <laughs> <laughs> Got to love the fickleness of football fans. Oh, but you love it, yeah, you call them, and then soon it's England, oh, I'm rejoined. <laughs> A bit like when we first signed Jack Grealish, he used to go up and down the country with City, and every team that we'd play against, they'd boo him. Yeah. No reason whatsoever. These are the same people that, in the um, European Championships of 2021, <laughs> were the same fans that were crying for Jack Grealish to be put on that pitch. Same same people. <laughs> How dare he force a move the, away? Yeah. It's what I love about football like that. I love the pettiness of football fans, the fickleness like that, the tribal aspect of it, the loyalty to <sighs> your club. That uh, will be a goal kick, and uh, yeah. Alvarez sent into the clattering into the advertisement boards. Looks at his elbow. But when we did the game against Crystal Palace, I was a little bit disappointed though. Wait, I thought they'd be noisy than what they were. So I don't know if it's a myth about Sellers Park, like Crystal Palace being a good atmosphere. Yeah, I think they just have a good core, like 200 fans yeah. that make some noise, that fly some flags that people talk about. Um, I just, I, I think as a whole, in general, I can't atmosphere... Comment, I've never been, so I can't actually put a personal perspective on it. I could all come on their away following and just didn't make that much noise. Yeah. But I've never done past Palace games and they've been very loud. They're just... I think... I think just in general, in England, atmosphere is just a little bit flat everywhere. People yeah. talk about Anfield atmosphere. I, I think <laughs> it's flat there as well. Is uh, Crystal Palace then an edge of the city penalty area? Cross comes in. Well, Ortega should be all over that. Reflecting that. And has an effort on no, goal. A little bit of a let off, half a chance there. Jordan is he still you? going? Jordan, are you still going? Where's his brother these is days? He's about 40 now. How old Jordan are you? Let's have a look. Where's his brother It seems like he's days? been there forever. Andre, are you? Uh, he's 32. 32. 33 this year. Where's his brother now playing now? Um, Andre, I use thirty-four. Andre, that's the one. Um, no, he's he's playing for Le Havre. Le Havre, ah, so he's going to League in Liga in in France. Un. Is City Holland? Oh! The Holland last season would be burying that. It should, be, it should be in, it should be bagged it should be a goal here's Rico Lewis, Lewis though mm. squares the ball across that's out for a corner but it should be bagging yeah one on one he was the man last season to be burying it I wonder let's have a look if he could have just gone for a nice little dink that's a brilliant Fuck ball in that. from De Bruyne I think it's just a little bit of a heavy touch from Haaland he probably he, he's got enough strength he there to, to hold off yeah. uh, Lerma he just look, looks to try and slot it past the keeper he should score he should score. Here's De Bruyne. That's too Passed hard. Oscar that, that, Bob's too point. hard. Um, yeah. It's good It's good goalkeeping. I'm making an excuse here for Haaland, though. It's It should be bagged. It should Someone be bagged. as good as Erling Haaland. Yeah. 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 He, he looks disappointed. He should be disappointed. Someone as good as Erling Haaland. It's, it's on his left foot as well. Should be. I mean, how can you deny KDB another assist? How many assists do you? Wasted. And Kevin De Bruyne's had a couple of wayward passes. Well, like I said, he <laughs> has, but he's got that in his locker as well, that key one. He does, yeah. <laughs> Here's De Bruyne now finds Oscar Bob. Oscar, uh, Sorry, Rico Lewis to Oscar Bob. Nah. That's good interception and nearly given away. Ooh, nearly. nearly given away from Jefferson Lerma. Palace can get the foot onto it, Matassa. Can they buy a little bit of space there? Oh, that's a good tackle from Rico Lewis, and that's going to be a throw in for Palace. I think that was more. But no, I've been hope. really impressed with Oscar Bob this season. Like I said, his development breaking into the first team, and it's looking promising. It has, yeah, and uh, it needs to build on it for it does, the next yeah. season. Hopefully, get some more first team opportunities would be good. A bit like Rico Lewis, I'm breaking into the team last season. I like seeing him play as well. Good player. 
They just need... I think City have just got to find a balance. I think they've got to find a way of getting these these high quality young yeah. players more regular game minutes and game time. Because otherwise, you run Man, the risk of losing these players. That's, that's what's yeah. happened with Cole Palmer. Doesn't surprise me that he's doing very well at no, Chelsea. It surprised me a little bit. I didn't think it's because I know he's a good player, but he's done really, really well with Chelsea. But the thing is, he's now Chelsea's main man because Chelsea aren't very good. Yeah. I can bring him back to Man City and he probably won't be able to still get into the team because there's just too much quality ahead of him. Yeah, he goes to Chelsea and Chelsea's the right fit for him because... He's getting he... that game time. That's what's uh, important about youth development. That very important in game time. Yeah. I have, it's so it... I wish we'd go to more to Man City's youngsters. There's some high quality young there players is. in there that you, you, you can't possibly find a way of getting all these young players regular minutes but the, the players that we've got around our first team if you're a young player and you are around the man city first team squad you are a very very gifted football player and i think man city i'd like to see a way of forgetting the likes of rico lewis and oscar bob more minutes because it saves so much money exactly so much money we settled on cole palmer and we settled for 40 million pound Cole Palmer, if Chelsea wanted to sell him Absolute to a top body, yeah. to a top Premier League team, you'd probably ask him for north of £80 million, maybe even more. Got to be English, had such a good season this In month. fact, you'd yeah. probably ask him for north of £100 million. And Jack Grealish has just gone down and hurt himself. A uh, challenge came in here from Munoz. Uh, I think he's hurt his knee. Julia, yeah, that Chelsea United game was cracking, and I happened to not watch it and missed I it. I just had, I saw Man United were winning in the 90th yeah. minute, three two, and I left it. I left it there, and then uh, I thought, oh, uh, just as I was going to bed at 11 p.m., I thought I'll have another check just to see what the final score was. I had to look twice, four three. I was like, what on earth's happened here? Crazy game, absolutely. What was it, 90, 98th yeah. and hundredth minute? Yeah. Mental must be good in United fan. Then much it made me smile. Look at that. Do you know what? There's a lot of controversy <laughs> about Mark Goldbridge's reaction, but it was so funny, so funny. I can imagine. <laughs> but people buy that. that's why he does it. He goes over top reaction like that because it gets that all important engagement. Yep. Yeah. So that's funny. how social media. I want to know who's coming up with his one liners. His one liners are sensational. There's no way he's coming up with those by himself. No way. People will be sending them and he'll be he'll be using them. <laughs> I'm hoping there'll be a compilation at the end of the season of Mark Goldbridge's best one-liners that he's come up with because they, they are funny. People can have loads of opinions about him, but I think his stuff that he comes up with is so funny. I'm still yet to find a better internet clip of him playing FIFA and saying that <laughs> ball never crossed the line. Uh, and he I'm goes on a two-minute <laughs> rant, and then he plays it on, and he clearly just goes over the line. <laughs> but you did show me <laughs> So funny. Oh. So, so funny. <laughs> I, I I think people just take Mark Goldbridge a little too literally. Yeah, but he plays up to that's his internet persona. Yeah. He plays up to it so brilliantly. You just gotta take it what it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you gotta look at it as uh yeah. take out the Man United equation, take out everything and just look at it from an entertainment point of view. <laughs> he is a clown, but he plays up to it. <laughs> Uh, so, Jay, do you know any of Arsenal Fan TV? Uh, I've never worked with them to so know. No, I didn't think you did. No. Is uh, one might do. Let's get a score update from Ipswich. So I've oh, got a uh, personal it. interest. Julie likes watching the fan reactions. I'm happy that I've started featuring on the fan reactions. I've told Aaron his fa his reactions have got to be on point today. <laughs> got to be on point today. Yeah, we'll be on so it later. We'll be over the top. Because we'll be on it later. <laughs> <laughs> Can't just sit here and just go goal. And you're not missing much from Port, uh, from no, no. Carrow Road, nil no, nil. No. Yeah, this game's just this Crystal Palace just has just taken the bit, taken yeah. the foot off the gas now. Um and I think my dream of Man City having this game wrapped up by half times uh, certainly not looking like that's gonna happen. As uh, the sunshine comes out in South London. Free kick given to City. Angela, thanks for tuning in, cheering on Crystal Palace today. <laughs> So who do you support, Angela? Let us know. Could be Palace. 
Could be Palace, could be Liverpool, could be Arsenal. Arsenal. Could, could be anyone. Man City aren't very well liked. Well, that's when you know you're doing well, when you're hated it. <laughs> oh, there's jealous, com- uh, jealous comments. That's when you know you're doing something right. Here's Rodri slips. Still manages to ping his ball across and uh, intercept. It's the same before to Man City fan. Like, say, you'd be pinching yourself. Go back to 2008 about how far you've come in 16 years. Well, it's been miraculous. I mean, I first started supporting City in 2002. And the growth that we've seen in just yeah. over 20 years is remarkable. I still think to myself, uh, watching City under Stuart Pearce. I vaguely just about remember <laughs> us under Kevin Keegan. We, I didn't think we were... Too bad. I didn't mind you under Kevin under Keegan. Kevin yeah, Keegan. I like watching it, but Stu Pearce started off all right, and then it just got just so dipped. negative, yeah. especially with that 2006-7 season, nine goals at home. <laughs> I don't know how we stayed up. <laughs> but you did. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I don't know how we stayed in the league that season, but we did. Good tackle. We did. There's a couple of, if I remember right, there were a couple of big results, Newcastle and Middlesbrough towards the end of yeah, the season. Yeah, especially and that Big six points, yeah. yeah, if I remember rightly. Uh, and it was a pleasure because... Uh, it's, football then was a lot different to now. We used to have like the Intertoto Cup and my favourite, the Fair Play League. So every now and then mm. I get to see City in, uh, Europe. in in Europe in the UEFA <laughs> Cup. But some of the UEFA Cup games are so yeah. entertaining, City, on the way to the Faroe Islands. One of the best <laughs> That's what sticks out to my mind, like senior City fans get on the boat I love it. to the Faroe Islands. Is there anything it. more you love more than football than that? I mean, what an adventure, what a story to tell. But there's people out there who call Manchester City fans for it and say, oh, they're getting a new breed of Manchester City fans and this is happening and that's happening and not I, not it's realising or I, not identifying yeah. that Manchester City do have that core support. That core support's always been there. They were there at Main Road. They yeah. were there watching City when we were playing one season in League One. They were there in the yo-yo in between yeah. the Championship and the Premier League uh, as well in the early 2000s. Uh, and right before there as well, there's that core support that's always been there. City have always been a prestigious, big football yes. club. You've always been up there, like Newcastle, Villas, like that. Those, that core fan base, that's 40,000 yeah. plus. You can easily match these clubs even before the corner city. De Bruyne goes Ooh. near post and back out for another corner. Jack Grealish has uh, picked up a knock. He's, he's feeling his uh, somewhere on his either his foot or his leg. He's hurt somewhere. Uh, city have clearly got plenty to think about. Pep looks a bit concerned. I don't know if it's the injury or the performance that's causing the concern here for City. Um, anyway, corner here again. That's De Bruyne goes again. again for the near post. Doesn't get it right and cleared. Ball just uh, falls onto the pitch. The City will have to retake the throw in. Uh, Rene, so I've got an update for Norwich Ipswich. 0 0. 0 0 at the moment in that game. We'll keep And welcome to the channel, Palace Panda. Here's uh, Rodrigo. Here's the ball to Ruben Diaz, recently single. And the ball to Johnny Stones. He'll look to try and get over his earlier error. Some people will say it's not an error, but I I am. I think that high up the pitch, I think I'd have, I think I'd have just pulled his shirt, pulled him back. I'd say there's an extra man covering. It's well loved about Vincent Cumney. He knew when to do the tactical fouls. He Didn't he? Game so well. Didn't he? <laughs> Didn't he? Because he knew when Man City, when his camera like that, he spotted the danger quickly in the halfway take Which, that yellow. There was a ta- there was a game where Vincent Company had the captain's armband, committed a foul, knew he was going to be sent off, just took his armband off and started walking towards the <laughs> oh, tunnel. I, love <laughs> I may not be a Man City fan, but I do love Company. <laughs> when you know, you know. Yeah. I, I I'm so uh, such a legend. I'm 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 not disappointed. I am. I don't know what the word is, but um, I wanted him to do really well with Burnley. He had such a yeah. good season with, uh, with with Burnley last season. And I, obviously all of us at Manchester City think the world of Vincent Company. He's captain fantastic. He is Mr. Nice Guy, who led by example. He was just yeah. represented to me everything about being a Manchester City fan. Um, and he represented the players, the club, the fans so well. And all I want is Vincent Company to be successful. We could play a Champions League final against Real Madrid and Vincent Company could be in charge. And if Man City lost, I'd be disappointed, but I'd be really happy for him 
It's like the England match yeah. uh, against Italy in the European Championships. Everyone was so disappointed. Oh. One sec, Oscar Bob squares it across oh, and it just goes straight across throws. the box and nearly goes out for a throw in. Um, <sighs> he should have gone for the shot. William, thanks for tuning in. Godrigo. We could do with a Godrigo rocket here. He doesn't go for his Rodri rocket. Here is Oscar Bob. Gets the overlap coming in from Johnny Stones. Just about manages to keep it in and shows enough well strength there, to yeah. keep hold of the ball and find the pass back to Oscar Bob. He wanted to put a ball into the box there. He only had Haaland to go at because Alvarez had dropped a bit deeper. Here is Johnny Stones. Finds Oscar Bob once more into the penalty area. Oh, it's good work from Oscar Bob. Really good, good work. Tackle. A good tackle as well. Really good tackle coming in from Palace. And they should be able to get this clear as well. Down the flank. City mop it up well and should get possession. Although Eze does really well. And remember, Eze's always getting linked with a move to Man City, so he's on show today. Same with Olise if he comes on for Palace. On show. But yeah, going back to that European Championship match, England-Italy at Wembley, that uh, Italy beat uh, England on penalties. I was so disappointed. I thought it was, that was the moment. The did, moment yeah. of a generation that we wanted. If only Harry Kane could have got that goal to make it 2-0 at the time. Because we had that opportunity to get 2-0 you know, and they just never... I, I was really happy for Bobby Mank. I won't have a bad word said against Roberto Mancini no. for everything that he did for Manchester City. I know there's been a bit of a fallout in the background and you don't see him really associated with Manchester City. I don't know what happened in the boardroom, but he was always a bit of a hothead. He was a bit very Italian, wasn't he? Oh, yeah, he's always very well opinionated. Very passionate. He'd always give it back. Yeah. But he, he was a man that you just love to get behind. Yeah. You know, he's... He's our manager. Goes to he has the audacity to go to Old Trafford and uh, celebrate and beat Manchester United six one. Who was it? He's had an argument. Was it Wenger? He slaps the ball out there. Was yeah. it Wenger? Who was it? He, was it Wenger? He slapped the ball it out. Moyes? Was it Moyes? I think it's Moyes. But he had the audacity to go toe for toe with. Uh, Premier League legends, people that yeah. have been around in the Premier League and uh, been there and done that, worn the T-shirt, and he just changed it up. But if you are a new generation of Man City fan, though, with Bobby Mank, you wouldn't have a year like you have now as he broke you up with the Premier League. Like, forever going your history, the biggest moment of your club. You don't ever see him getting invited back to the Etihad or in the boxes or anything. There should be a statue of Roberto Mancini as far as I'm concerned. Here is Alvarez. Shot comes in, 20 yards out, just wide. Remains 1-1 here. Don't forget, guys, leave a thumbs up. That would be much appreciated. Now, halfway to our like goal of 100 likes. Any help towards that would be much appreciated. Do subscribe as well if you're new around here. And do check out today's video sponsor, Sofa Score. Links and details there in the description. Rene, uh, I don't think Messi will have a reunion with Pep. I don't see how that would happen now, if I'm honest. Nadir says, I'd take Alvarez off at half-time. If you used to take Alvarez off, who would you put on? What would be the option? Foden? Yeah, give me your Foden. thoughts on that. Foden. It's got to be Foden. It's got to be. De Bruyne is pulling strings for City at the moment. Uh, do you know what, John? I don't think Bobby Mann could be fitting... Uh, wouldn't not fit uh, in it at the Godfather. He's just... <laughs> oozed class, didn't he? His designer suits and everything. <laughs> That's oh, what I love. Oh, it's oh, Italian suit. Something else. <laughs> like the Italian shoes. Italian suits. Different the style hair. fashion. Just beautiful. The it's hair. Just, it's a different class, isn't it? Yeah. Saw that when we went to Milan. Yeah. It's like fine wine. But all the Italians are. We, we, we love, like, we'll, we'll, we'll love Roberto Mancini. I think we're getting towards the... What's it called, Aaron? Um, it's, it's like nostalgia that people always just think about all the good times. And City have had better times now than we have under Roberto Mancini, but I just think back to them times, the first time doing things Everyone and it, seeing though, it. You know, Love it. Back. Loved it. I mean, I talk about the financial fair play charges, 115 and taking it all away from City, but you can't take away what's already happened and memories and things, can you? I don't care where you got stripped tonight, you still won it. <laughs> yeah, you can't take it. You can't take Aguero's goal away from him. Yeah. It, it's a moment that happened. It's a moment that's gone down in history. You can't take away the achievements that happened from Manchester City either. Um, I do always say that if you if you used to win something, you. You don't want to win things through default. It doesn't feel the same. No. 
obviously the opposition fans will go, oh yeah, I love it and everything. But it's not the same, I, I mean, though, I mean, yeah. deep down, it's embedded. You can in never have that the, emotion like that, yeah. that at the time. There's, you haven't got that emotional got attachment that memory, yeah. to it. Yeah, I think you're spot on. Is that, that emotion's not there? Because when your club wins something, it's history. Like I said, you can look back fondly on it. Oh, I won it default ten mm. years later. Mm. <laughs> oh, great. That is a tainted title. I'm just trying to think if it was the other way around and, like, say Man United got a deduction, got their trophy took away from them, uh, you know, when they had Van Persie back yeah. in 2013, would I be happy that we got it? Yeah, I'd be happy. Would I, would I have any memories of it? No. No. It'd just be a trophy. Do you know what I mean? You need them moments. You it's need well, your Yaya Torre at Wembley against Man United and against Stoke City. You need your Aguero moments. Yeah. You need your Rodri moments in the Champions League final. You need them moments. Them moments are the ones that that count. They're what create that emotional attachment to it's football. What, that's what creates life. Ball comes in here from Palace and uh, Ortega manages to collect that easily enough. Do you know what? Palace have... Just started to sit deep and that pressing game's gone away. They're, they're not having much possession now. Rodri's given oh, the ball away. You've got to stop doing this. You it's three on one. Oh, we're sending it. Oh, and the cross bar. And a big let off. Commentators curse Anthony. Rodri's bossing it. Rodri gives it away and Palace hit the crossbar. Palace should score. But Man City, you are on your own worst enemies here. They can't be doing this at the Bernabeu. I'm sorry, but your your Rodrigo's, your um, yeah. your Jude Bellingham's, your Vinicius Juniors, they're gonna have a field day with this. As this is the third time, and you've been punished once for it. We're too open. You are too open. It's gotta say, I think there'll be something said at half time, especially with Pep Guardiola. He will not be amused. Look at this performance. I mean, Pep Guardiola looks. F every time the, pa the camera is turned onto him, he looks fuming. John Stones looks miles off the pace. Yeah. It's something's not right here. Rennie's informed me there's been a red card in that uh, Ipswich match. Let's have a look. Let's use today's video sponsor. So, yeah. Score. Link in the description <laughs> in the live chat. Or the QR code on screen. Let's see what's happening uh, in that game. So it's currently 1 0 Norwich. Hmm. Uh, don't say any red cards on it, it just says a yellow card for. Uh, Tuan Twinzebi? Twinzabi? Twinzebi? Norwich just have Ipswich number, don't they? <laughs> They're not beating them in so long, over a decade. Is uh, City. But well, that is Ruben actually Diaz. news, though, for Rene. Oh, Leicester. oh, oh, oh! Ah, Oscar Bob gets a shot. Uh, sorry, Rico Lewis gets a shot away and straight into the hands of Henderson. It's the first time, really, that we tested the hands of Henderson in a good 15 if that minutes. If say what it means, impressing North End a must win today. I mean, your season, if you don't win today, is it's over, over regardless. But eight points behind. Yeah. Um, very old-fashioned ground, isn't it, Sellers Park? I do like it. Very old-fashioned. It's just so far away from where we are. It's, dead it's one of those, isn't it? It's one of the, most, uh, one of the more awkward. awkward ones for London. Yeah. On a 12.30pm kickoff for uh, City I respect fans. any City fan that's done that. So I said that is dedication. I actually think it's it's just as awkward as your Brightons and your Bournemouths and your Southamptons, etc. I think we've got Southampton a week on Tuesday. Tuesday night at Southampton. See if we don't get called off again for a Tuesday fire. night. Tuesday night. If I'd done proper planning, Joe, so I could have done Southampton then Man City. <laughs> I mean, if I had enough money, I'd be going to Madrid on Tuesday night. I could have got tickets for that. I just oh. don't have enough money. <laughs> <laughs> It's not, even, it's, not, it's, not even, it's not even time, it's just money. <laughs> Rodri slips and that goes out for a corner. Uh, sorry, a goal kick to Crystal Palace. Just do that, quick notice. Hi, Jay, so do you fancy a quick trip to Madrid? Oh, go, go on, man. I'd love it. I'd love I'd love to be doing all this full-time and just say, do you know what, I need to be yeah. in Madrid. 
Now that is the dream. Why is there no ball boy giving Henderson the ball? Or are they just trying to time waste? I mean, there's a bit of concern on that For bench. a little bit there, when I was looking at him, I thought he looks a little bit like Sapi Alonso. Oh, I can see where you're coming from. I can see where you're coming from. Yeah, nobody zoomed in like that. Huh? I tell you what, Javi Alonso's having a, a brilliant season. No, they're still unbeaten, aren't they? Still like, unbeaten, crazy. yeah. Crazy. Haven't they got West? Have they got West Ham in the Europa they League? They do. I think. I want. I want to say that. that they do. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at the fixtures. We could talk about that at uh, half. I think time. we can. It's the game's getting a little bit quiet here. Fairly sure they have. Yeah, they do. West Ham. <laughs> Imagine you like yeah. Oh, have they lost in the cup this season, Leverkusen? I'm not sure. I don't know. So I feel a bit sorry for the manager, like David Moyes, if he could get a bad rap for no reason at West Ham. He's, given, he's handed them a European trophy. I know. And oh, then they're doing all right in the Premier League this season. I mean, they're doing well in Europe. <laughs> I don't know. Because it's one of those, like you said, with Vincent Company. <laughs> John, you spot on the ultimate yo-yo club. They are, they'll oh, do it. Okay. Oh, Palace, no. another good Chad. position. There's no one around and it's a poor touch. Will Hughes can't get it to get fall nicely it. to him. And Oh, what are we doing? Oh, my word. Ortega Moreno makes a... Get I, him out how do, towards, I, how, how, how do I describe that? So, a back pass comes in from City... Um, Palace have a player around the keeper, so it's nearly, nearly just handing Palace a goal, and Ortega Moreno just has he has techers, shows skill, Luckily, just yeah. turns his man. Like Edison will be, watch, be watching. Edison will be watching that on the bench, and we're going. Not bad. That's Ortega be shushing Edison. <laughs> what? That was a mess. Edison's picking his nose on the bench. So we should. He'd be concerned. He'd be like, huh? I'd be concerned, yeah. Huh. Under high pressure where a player around you, you get a suicidal back pass, but there he is. There he is. Turns Tekka his man. Turns him. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> turns him. Just turns him. There's risky and then there's that. But Man City's always had that danger factor about them. That was borderline kamikaze. That was, that's, so that's many, not risky. How many that was times do they do it today? I don't know. They, 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 City look like they're going to concede a second at some point. A free kick given against City for Crystal Palace. Um, Palace getting up ahead of steam here yeah. as we head towards half-time. Morton, the man that's brought down. Let's have a look at this. So Rodri with the suicidal back pass. Mateta's ready to read it. It looks like it's going past Ortega and he just... That is cool as you like that. Does he mean it? Does he mean it? He's lucky that there's not a second player following that heavy touch that Ortega yeah. takes to follow that in. That was a mess. A real mess from Manchester City. Is uh, Palace coming forward? As I said, they're just getting up ahead of steam here as we hit on half time. Ball comes into the box. What are you and doing? Palace want a penalty. It's going to be at least a, a, a corner. Corner given. Gavardio says he wants a shout. Palace asking Palace the question of the okay. referee. Referee says he'll let VAR have a look at it, but referee sport, not for him. Let's have a look. No. Nah, there's, just a come, there's a coming together. There's nothing more. There's no... Let's have a look. No, there's a little coming together. He no. kind of gets his arms around him. There's not, it, yeah. there's not nothing else in it. And he just falls to the ground for me, no. Yeah. Yeah, go with the referee's decision there. Corner. Give a penalty for that. You may as well just stop. But there is defending. Corner comes in. It's not a bad ball in and Ortega yeah. gets his fist onto that. And uh, City can just get it clear. And uh, City just needs to be careful. Into you the do. First you look three a little minutes. bit nervous. Especially I think I'd be happy to see the half-time yes. whistle. I'll be happy to see the half-time whistle. Just to regroup here. Yeah. Long ball comes in. Uh, Gavardio lets that bounce. Don't let it bounce. Just put your head on it. Head it out of play. You let When he lets that ball bounce, he's in all kinds of bother. Why is there a guy there with a Derby County hat on? What's going on? 
Um, I don't know. Why he let, so he lets that take the bounce. Once he lets that take the bounce, if he's uh, out-muscled, Palace could have a dangerous attack yeah. there. You just go forward, you put your head on the ball and put it in the stands. Let the defence come back, regroup, regroup yeah. and stop being so risky. Just keep it simple. I'm normally very critical of City being too too patient, but this is one of these games that City just, at times, need to be patient to get control. Because at the moment, they've not got any real control. No, because especially the last 15 minutes, you've dropped off a bit. That should be a free kick. Yeah. It is a free kick against Gavardiol. I don't think Gavardiol. I've been impressed with him over the last couple of games. I don't think he's. I, I don't think he's having a very good game. He's into the book. No, but there's a few players that are not having a. I'm in a very good game. I don't know, but I just think there's been an unnecessary amount of rotation from Manchester City today. I think Man City are guilty here of thinking about Real Madrid too much. You've you took off it, your yeah. Bernardos, you took off yeah. your Phil Foden's, you took off your control. Well, you'll never change it. Pepe Lawns do that. It just looks. It just City just look. But saying well, that, I think mess. that's why you did last season best because you had such a small squad, no squad depth. You didn't really rotate that much. No. And I think it worked well because you gelled together. They got used to one another. They got used to a system. There's just a winning yeah. system always in place. Especially after Christmas, that line is keeping near enough the same team, maybe two yeah. or three changes. It wasn't radical. Nadir, do you know what, Nadir? I think Foden and Bernardo need to come on at half time. They'd be my two changes. I'd be looking for a little bit more control here because yeah. at the moment. We've not got that control. I'd be looking at this game and I'd say I want Rodri off the pitch to rest for ahead of Real Madrid. But Rodri's got to stay on because I think Rodri's been one of our, I guess he's been one of our best players. But I don't Bob even think I don't, I don't even think Rodri's <laughs> been I don't even think it's Rodri's been, been, no. been as good as what he can be. I just think that's how bad Man City have been that there's not not really been too much standout. De Bruyne showed that little bit of quality in front of goal. Haaland's missed his big opportunity. Yeah. I've not seen much of Alvarez. Uh, I thought John Stones made a mistake, uh, not fouling his man in the build-up to the goal. There's been poor giveaways from De Bruyne, from Rodri. Defences look shaky. Gavardio's not playing too well. I mean, I, to be honest, of the young players, Oscar Bob and Rico Lewis, I don't think have done too bad of a job. They've not been the ones that have been guilty for City of not playing yeah. particularly well. Uh, and there goes the half-time whistle. And I'll be honest, I think I'm pretty happy to hear that half-time whistle. Man City have been far from their best in that first half. And uh, the only team that I think is pretty happy and confident will be Crystal Palace. And I think they've got a pretty simple and straightforward half-time team talk. And that'll be much of the same for the second half. A City just lacking a bit of control. I think Kovacic is a player I'm not talking about. He brings he uses quality in midfield. Mr. Safe Pass himself. We need, a bit, we need a bit of not safe passing. Shout. Someone that's just going to help you move from defence into attack yeah. with the safe passes, with good awareness around him. Kovacic, I think, could be a player I'd be looking at. And I think I'd be taking off. I think John Stones would be the player I'd be taking off. Try and get a little bit more uh, control in that midfield because at the moment we look way off. I have learned some of I've learned that John Stones, I don't think, should be starting against Real Madrid on Tuesday night. I don't think he's uh, there yet. He's obviously picked up the injury. City have wanted to get him some minutes. I don't think he's got enough minutes to be warranting starting at the Bernabeu for me. No. I think that's an important thing to know. Other than that, I've not really learned anything in that first half other than Manchester City have just been way off and uh, this continues in the second half. Man City, I think, could be dropping be points today. Yes. I think they could lose today yeah, I'll be if this continues if continue in the second like half. Anyway, on today's video, sponsor, Soberscore. Links in the description, also in the live chat and you can use the QR code on screen. Uh, go, go through the stats and uh, we're going to draw up some conclusions. So from around the grounds, it is 1-0 uh, Norwich against Ipswich. You've also got Manchester City taking on Crystal Palace here. Currently 1-1. Uh, three minutes, it was Mateta giving Crystal Palace the lead uh, before Manchester City equalised 10 minutes later in the 13th minute through Kevin De Bruyne. In terms of the expected goal rate, Manchester City at 0 0.99, Crystal Palace at 0 0.75. City dominating the football, 76% possession, 9 shots, 5 on target. You'd look at that and you'd say City have got some control of the game. problem I think I'm having is... 24% possession for Crystal Palace. They've got a high expected goal rate at just under one because they've had three efforts on goal, one on target. Yeah. The other opportunities that they've had hit the crossbar. 
Stefan Ortega doing that step over that could easily have led to a goal. Palace could have had three goals in that first half. The stats don't show that. No. And Manchester City have just been their own worst enemy in this game. And from what I've seen in the first 45 minutes, I'm taking no confidence away. Not one bit. And I am incredibly disappointed. I want to see changes in the second half. Let's have a look at the bench. Where's the game going to be won and lost here for City from the bench? Akanji, Bernardo, Kovacic, Foden, Doku. These are the players. City want to be thinking about Madrid. They want to chuck on Sergio yeah. Gomez. They want to chuck on Mateus Nunes. You want that bit of rotation to give a bit of rest to the important first-team players. But at the moment, it's just not happening. I mean, look at Sofa Score's rating of, of it's players. It's because they're not trusting like that. Are they ready yet for that? At the moment, Sofa Score's got Erling Haaland down as the worst player. Not really linked up too well. He's been set off yeah. one on one, that one opportunity, and he's missed it. Other than that, it's just not work. It's like you said, they should have stitched the same formation that he did against Aston Villa. He's same team, well. yeah. same formation, and I reckon we'd be ahead here. I really do. I really do. Um, Just, yeah, disappointing from City. Uh, elsewhere, in terms of the statistics, I'm intrigued to know about the um, possession. Uh, City, 395 passes. Uh, 354 connecting, 90% pass completion rate. Crystal Palace have had only 125 passes. 91 of them have been completed. 73% pass completion rate. It's just not very good yet. They've had three big opportunities in this game. And it's all because Man City have presented them on a plate. Yeah. I tell you what, guys. Has we do this Tuesday night. We are in serious, bother. serious bother. Real Madrid aren't Crystal Palace. They have exceptional quality with a point to prove this is the team that we knocked out the Champions League last season at the semi-final this is the team we absolutely annihilated in that second leg of the semi-final last season they will have a point to prove and this performance that I'm seeing from City's leggy it's disjointed it's all over the place uh, we're just not playing a really good game of football and I think Pep's face all through the first half has summed up Manchester yeah. City. What are your thoughts, Aaron? What do you think? I can't disagree with you, Jay, on it. It's because they look very leggy. It's because they look disjointed. At times, it is there. Mm. But you just need to be bearing these chances. A bit more possession. Just be a bit more better on the ball, especially with the silly decision-making, giving the ball away in it's dangerous just, yeah. positions. It's just not being great, has it? If I'm being completely honest. Uh, it's like you said, with Haaland, it's because I want to change that formation. <sighs> what do you think of Haaland? Open and honest. What do you reckon? What do you think? I like him, but I've never been convinced he's a Man City player. Okay. What makes you think that? Because Man City are a very technical side. You're very possession-based, and that isn't Haaland. Okay. Haaland is one... Like I say, he's saw that through ball. He likes those types of balls. Mm-hmm. Like you said, fantastic goal finisher, but technical ability, no. And I think he needs to start upping his game a little bit. I think with what City are looking for... We're now looking at a point where... Do you think the injuries affected him? No sense coming back. Potentially. Uh, I just I've, The problem that we've got is I don't think we know how to get the best out of Erling Haaland. I think Erling Haaland was at his best at the beginning of last season, the first half of last season. Yeah. Man City were at their best in the second half of the season. Not in the first half. But Haaland still chipped in then as well. But Haaland was dropping deep. Yeah. And he was uh, passing and distributing nicely. He was contributing to the team really nicely. I remember a really good performance that he had at the Emirates Stadium against Arsenal. He was so important because he was dropping deeper and he was forcing the defenders just to take a step forward. And it was allowing City to get other players to chip in with the goals that we were looking for. Your Jack Grealishes, your Phil Foden's, your Kevin De Bruyne's. I think this is the big one. You're real kind yeah. of Gundogan's. We've not really replaced them goals. We yeah. haven't got that big game player. This game smells of Ilkay Gundogan's second half a brace. 3 1 Man City. Yeah. It goes under the radar. It goes I unnoticed. Know. But Man City pick up a big three points and no one really pays attention. And I just think. I think Man City's squad isn't as good as last season. No, no, because you had Mares as well, another player that I really like. I say it takes time for like Os- Oscar Bob to get to that standard. Try and get will. Here, fifteen goals, no contributing to the team. He's sitting there. Do you know who? Do you know who else I think we've missed in this game? 
well, Kyle Walker pace at the back. Because City could just adapt their defence yeah. and just say, I want... I'm watching the Is replay of the first goal. Um, Pep says Kyle Walker's not fit for the first leg. Pep has also said that what I deem a player being fit and what Kyle Walker deems being fit are two different things, which is Kyle Walker saying, I'm fit. I want to go up against Vinicius Junior, is what he's saying. And Vinicius Junior, he's having a right to see him in the friendly, having a right good laugh with each other. They love the challenge. They they, they do love the challenge. And and I just just think you get the very best out of Kyle Walker when he's going up against your Mbappes and your... He does, uh, because he really steps up. He looks like Chalet. He loves him both. I've got a man mark, a world-class quick winger. No problem, I'll go and do that. No problem. Uh, I don't think Pep will allow that. I don't think so. Um, going back to the Erling Haaland thing, I just don't think City have found a way as of yet to get Erling Haaland uh, too involved at City and get the very best out of him. As I said, I think what Erling Haaland wants yeah. and what Man City want at the moment, I think, are, are two different things. And I think that's causing a bit of a problem for us. It's a problem we need to find the solution of very quickly. Uh even if that means for the sake of the team, you drop. I'm going to yeah. I'm going to say it. You drop Erlin Haaland and you play Julian Alvarez. If it works, it works. Well, yeah, because it might be the best thing for Haaland as well. So it gives him a rocket. Gives him something to think about. And it's a big test for him. Yeah. Erlin Haaland will go one or two ways. He'll either say, "I really want to make it work," and I need to do something, up, yeah. or he's They're going to say, I, "This is. I'm not happy. I'm. I'm yeah. Erlin Haaland." I'm paid half a million pounds a week. And I think that's just it for Man City. They're now facing things from a, a, a business yeah. point of view. You know, fans turn up to watch Erling Haaland. You know, people yeah. get, you get bums on seats yeah. with Erling Haaland being there. But football is a results-based business. And yeah. football is all about winning. I don't care what anybody says. It's all about winning. winning. Yes. If you aren't winning, you aren't successful. Simple as that. And... You've got to do everything you can to win. Pep's paid big money to make them decisions. He made a big decision on Wednesday night to not play Erling Haaland. And Man City and won they and they played well. And then all of a sudden, I'm not saying Haaland's the problem. I'm just saying I just don't think he suits what City want to do at this moment in time. And for me, you've. I just don't think Alvarez and Haaland in the same team works. Yeah, it's one say, that's been the or question. The other for, for me, whatever reason, it's just not worked well. They've never played him in and both strikers like in the front two, or the Vols played him like Alvarez always behind. They, 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 I've not seen City go with a front two in a very long time. Probably not since 2017, 18. I've not seen us do that for a front two. So I just, I just, I just not sure. Uh, John says, he makes a good point, says, how many goals has Erling Haaland got so far this season? I think he's on 19 Premier League goals. I think he's a it's top goal. He's a top <laughs> goal scorer. This is, a, this is just it. This, yeah. is a, this is a poor season for Erling Haaland. An it's inform Erling Haaland, got, Haaland yeah. right now has 30-plus goals. Yeah. But that, to me, there's the dip. Erling Haaland compared them at this stage last season to this season. We were speaking about, could Erling Haaland go on and score 40 Premier League goals? Yeah. We're not talking about Erling Haaland scoring 40 Lots Premier goals. League goals this season. I don't think Erling Haaland's even going to get to 30. Feel free at the end of the season to clip what I've just said if I'm wrong. You're wrong. But Maybe I don't not. think I'm going to be wrong. I've not seen enough for me to be to think that I'm going to be wrong. I just don't think it's going to happen. He might get to 25. I don't think he's going to get to 30, which 25 is a great season. 25 Premier League goals is a really right, good yeah. season. But for what we're looking for for Manchester City and the amount of chances that we're creating, and more importantly, the effect that it's having on the team, I've yeah. got to see more. It is, because it's an interesting thing looking more. at the... Because I can just interrupt you, Jay, is the you can see that difference in the goal difference. You were normally miles straight ahead of Liverpool and Arsenal and all the competitors. This time, you're not. You know, I mean, top goal scorers. No. Your goal difference is worse than Liverpool and by far worse than Arsenal. By far. And you can tell that difference, that drop off. Yeah. I think there's plenty to think about. I think there's, I think there's plenty for Man City to think about. I really do. Um, maybe I've just been blinded by one previous performance or all I'm thinking about is Wednesday. But yeah. on Wednesday, I felt so good watching Man City. I felt Man City were just at their very best. I think that Man City team that I saw on Wednesday, 
Aston Villa are a very good team, very underrated. Yeah, they've had some injuries and they've got a suspension to McGinn, but they are a very good team and Man City made them look ordinary. And it linked up so well and that was due to the quality that we had. Not so much about Erling Haaland, it was more about the Phil Foden show. But I can put Phil Foden on here and I don't think the problems would be solved. I think the problems lie upon the uh, freedom in midfield. Yeah. And whilst we've got Erling Haaland, I don't think there's much freedom in midfield unless Haaland's prepared to drop deep. But as you said, I, I, I've not I've seen not enough seen football and technical no. ability for him to drop deep. Whereas Alvarez will. I don't know. You've got to find that balance. We've not got the balance. We've certainly not got that balance in this game. But, you know... City may just be very lethargic and then we wait on Erling Haaland and he goes on and he scores that one big important goal. And, uh, you know, yeah, we say that's all that yeah. matters. So just need that uh, we'll see. Anyway, quick half-time entertainment for you guys. Brought to you by Mixed. It is his 50 States of Cocktails, Alaska, isn't it? Yeah. What's the drink called? It is the Duck Farm. Very peculiar, you know that. <laughs> anyway, yeah, we'll roll that and we'll see you for the second half. What's going on guys, Mix It here, back again for another state cocktail. This is state number three, Alaska. So we're going to do the state drink of Alaska. Can you guess what it is? Because say, if you know Alaskan drinks, this one is the Duck Farts. Because it's a very peculiar name, it's very fascinating. But it's one I must show you. It's because say, it's a shop version, so this is the national drink, the Duck Farts. So let's make a Duck Fart, it's three combinations, it's quite easy to make. It's a later recipe, it's shot. So you've got the Baileys, you've got the Kahlua, and of course you've got the whiskey. So the one that I can find closest to it is probably the Crown Royals. It's Canadian whiskey. So that stays true more to the recipe. But the question you want to know is, how does it get such a peculiar name? I say this, the story goes like this for this one. It's said to have originated from a bar in Alaska. It's going to say between uh, two bartenders, a man and a woman, where there's experiment with drinks. And eventually they came up with this one and it gets its name. <laughs> As uh, the woman was trying the, this shot, their own creation, and uh, of course, you can guess what happened. But say when she down the shots, go say she farted, and that's where they came up with the name, the duck fart, and that is where it gets its name from, the duck fart shot, and it's stuck ever since, and it's very quite popular in Alaska, I hear. So that is the simple history of Alaska. Now it's stuck is the national state drink. So this is state number three, Alaska, the duck fart shot. So let's get straight into it, or shoot it, I should say. So to make a duck fart, what you want to do now is put in the Kahlua to say the bottom. And so the first thing is the Kahlua. Now here is the best part that sets apart bartenders, so the layering. So remember when you pour it, when you're layering a drink, pour it in very slowly. So next is the Baileys, again at one third. The final thing to do now is a layer on the whiskey. So again, oh, remember as always, do a slow pour. And there we go, one duck fart. How does it taste? Cheers, Alaska. One those, it's very sweet, it's gonna say very, very deceiving. A deceiving shot, one for goal, so but it's quite a little bit heavy, it's because especially with the colour in the in the bailers, it's because it's a little bit of a heavy shot as well. Nice, but heavy. I'd probably rate that a solid seven out of ten. But that, my friends, is the duck part shooter, it's gonna say the national drink of Alaska. But if you're new around here, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe to Mix It for more state cocktails like this as we will be continuing on with the series on to state number four as we will be travelling to Texas as we'll be doing the Paloma and then from Texas we'll be going to Oklahoma for state cocktail number five. As I will see you guys then, but happy to everyone.
Cheers. Thank you very much, Aaron, for providing today's um, halftime very entertainment. Welcome. Much appreciated. Just uh, take an opportunity there to have a quick break. Uh, second half has kicked... Uh, I've gone for the first half. I don't want the first half. Uh, yeah, second half has kicked off. Uh, so I'll just get the timer up. We're on to 46 minutes and five seconds. There we go. Perfect. Up to date with where we're at. Winning. Oh, righty -o. Hopefully we can see a little bit more from City. Uh, I can see a Kanji's come onto the pitch, so a change has been made by Manchester City. So let's have a look at what uh, change City have chosen to make. I think it is um, Yoshko Gavardiel that's come off. Yeah, yeah Gavardiel has come off. As a ball comes in from oh, Grealish. Oh, Nessler! Yeah! Rico Lewis with the deflection into the back of the net. I said in the latter part of the first said, half, yeah. I said, I said, I said, I looked towards Oscar Bob, I looked towards Rico Lewis. These are two players to me that have done absolutely nothing wrong in the first half. Uh, Rico Lewis showing up there and going back to what we were saying before, yeah. getting some more minutes. What a player Rico Lewis is. He's got a bright future ahead of him. He certainly does. I'm so happy for him. Hey, he tucks it away. You talk about him being a defender, but there he is in the penalty area. And that's what you didn't have in the Bam. first half. Like that, Rico Lewis, well, he is now pushing him further up. Nice little finish. A good well. finish. It's, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a striker's finish. Let's have a look. Is it a deflection? It comes off the underside well, of the boot, but into the back of the net it goes. Nice. And that's just what we needed. Just what we needed. Boom. Like Anthony says, uh, boom goes to dynamite. 2 1 City. Oh, and boom goes the dynamite. <laughs> yeah, but one thing we didn't mention there, as we're a little bit late coming back to the second half, uh, Palace did miss a half decent chance. There was a half decent chance, the, uh, yeah. Netting. Well, so half time entertainment was playing, yeah. yeah, it just went into the side net and there was that option there. Uh, they missed their opportunity. I said I wanted City to be clinical. And There's that it, goal. Yeah. And what we need to do now. We've got ourselves Just in a great going, position. Yeah. You've got to keep going. Keep going, keep going. Palace haven't really parked the bus, so I'm not going to say that that should open Crystal Palace up. I think Palace are just going to continue doing what they're trying to be trying to do. They've had three big opportunities in that first half. Can they get another big opportunity? That is the question. And for Man City, we've just got to keep pushing. You fancy if we can get a, a two-goal cushion here that that could, could be curtains. But... Yeah. We're two, nil up, know, at, yeah. two nil up at the Etihad, 76 minutes, Crystal Palace got a goal, and they ended up coming away from the Etihad two, with, two. with a point. They did. So, I recall. Yeah. So, the, yeah, it's interesting. So, at the moment, as the table stands, Arsenal, we're above them, they're two points behind City. It means if this stays the same, Arsenal have got to beat Brighton yeah. to go back above Manchester City. And I, I, want, I want City to try and win comfortably that was what I was looking for I want to win and I want us to win comfortably De Bruyne wants a penalty he thinks it's handball let's have a look he wants a corner that doesn't sure happen be checking, but I think it's harsh let's have a look it all depends on if his arm comes out and if it hits so Rodri's asking the question the referee has asked Ask players question, to stop no. just so VAR can have a look at it I do think that have a look no. it's harsh because his arm's here yeah. Never a penalty. If it hits his other arm that's out, I'd say mm -hmm. maybe, but it doesn't. It hits his arm that's tucked by his side. Not a penalty. I mean, I, you know when it's handball and it's a penalty because the players are asking the question. Yeah. When they know it's handball, they're not asking the question. They surround the referee <laughs> shouting. <laughs> <laughs> they do. You see, do you know what I mean? They all go running. They stop playing. They, they go, like it's that. hit his arm. It's hit his arm. <laughs> That's what they do is uh, Johnny Stones do KDB. Works the ball out nicely to Rodri. you can read that any game in you know, like the sport. Yeah. The sports like cricket. You know when everyone's appealing like in football. Yeah. Play it. They're, they're there. They know. It is. Psychology. They know. They know. You can read body language as well, especially with the guilty party. No one has a better angle of all the football play than the players who are right there. That's not the best of passes, and Jack Grealish would do really well if he can keep that in. He can't out for a goal kick. 
<laughs> Dad says he thinks that Powers have had a few of them duck farts at half time. <laughs> well, I'm sure you do, anyway. <laughs> What's your uh, next 50 states cocktail? Uh, so I'm going to Texas for the next one, then Oklahoma. What's uh, your Texas one? I was thinking Paloma, but I've been doing my research. It's Mexican. Oh, okay. But I can Mexico. class Margarita. Oh, it's Texas. Yes. All right, okay. Uh, there's a few Hawaii ones. Hawaii, Mai Tai. Every, if you think of Hawaii, you think of Mai Tai straight away. Tiki drink. Yeah, straight away, Mai Tai. It's one of my favourite drinks as well in the Mai Tai. Mai Tai. But yeah, know. but if there is any American uh, audiences that are live, do give me any cocktail recommendations nice. from the States. Too early. Or if you love cocktails for any of the English ones. My US so. friends, I'm afraid, aren't with me today because it's way too early. I mean, that's still dedication. I wait if there is any like wake up this early. I mean, is there anyone? Is is there anyone in here from the USA it, right now? I'd be very surprised. Cause that you watching the NFL? That's dedication to so try and watch Miami Dolphins. Oh man, yeah, I had some good memories from this winter actually watching them, staying up till five a.m. watching them in the in the playoff game. I'm not dedicated that, Bowl. but I have actually enjoyed watching them. I've, I've I've dedicated it. I really enjoyed it. Uh, Palace into a good position here. Akanji going one on one. I think Akanji's just been told to go square. Um, I wonder if I've I've heard rumours oh. of if Walker's not fit for Tuesday night. Rico Lewis starts. I wonder if City are looking at this and just thinking they're not sure about Yoshko Guvardiol that they may go with Akanji on the left hand side. I wonder. I think it's a good shout because I think Akanji has really, really impressed me since he joined you. I was very skeptical when he first joined, but he looks so comfortable. His business end of the season, you get the very best out of Akanji. I mean, Akanji did a great job in the Champions League last season. He did, yeah. Wonderful job in uh, Kyle Walker's uh, absence. But he just looks so comfortable because he's not error prone either. It's just. Walker was kept out of the team, yeah. weren't he, for the Champions League final? Yeah. He didn't start. It was a Kanji that they went with. He's a good player, a Kanji. And what I like about a Kanji is play on the right, play on the left, and through the middle. That, yeah. Perfect. We're missing Nathan Ake, aren't we? I just realised that's what we're missing. Yes, Nathan Ake. There it is. Nathan Ake. Defence just looks a bit. Yeah. It's really stretched. Because yeah. you don't actually have a proper left back, do you? No. Um, is Gavardio's a centre-back in his... No, yeah. no. Is it something you've learnt to adapt? Mm. Uh, right, guys, we are 43 likes away from 100 likes. Any help towards that would be much appreciated. Do subscribe as well. Uh, and do uh, go and d download today's video sponsor, which is brought to you by SofaScore. Free app to download, by the way, guys. Rico Lewis. Here's Rico Lewis. Oh, she... Works across to Harlan. Drops Harlan. down and Harlan. Harlan rounds oh. the keeper. And the Alvarez, back. surely oh, no! Block. Alvarez well, that's just fair from Harland. I thought he kept that line cheeks. very well. How's he made the block there? Is Anderson already down when he makes that block? Oh, could Holland even gone down? <laughs> John, the, the Kyle Shanahan Super Bowl 58 yeah, balls up. He's already down. He hits it against him to make the block. Yeah, just they just got it wrong, didn't they? The San Francisco 49 is right at the end against the Chiefs. Just just got it wrong. Weren't I didn't think it was a very good game. I've seen much better NFL games in the re throughout the regular season. Um I, I, I mean to me uh I I think I think the 49ers it could be their year next year or this no, next year, the regular season's this year. Next season's uh, season, I think. <laughs> I, I really do. I, I do. Yeah. They've, they've been flirting with it for a little while. But got a big NFL draft coming up. End of this month. Ooh. Corner here for City. De Bruyne to take. Stones forward. Diaz forward. Oh, it's a good oh. ball to Grealish. Well over the bar. Not seen too much of Jack Grealish in this game so far. He apologises for his effort for going over the top of the crossbar. Nobody did contribute to the second goal with his cross. Mm. Just kind of goes. He's an under the radar player, isn't he? Yeah. It's just because he's playing in an attacking position that people want to see 
more. But I, I always feel like City have got good control on that left-hand side when Grealish is playing. I think I prefer Jack Grealish to be starting the game than Jeremy Doku. I prefer Doku to come off the bench and make an impact. Or if Doku's to start, I'd rather him start on the right wing rather than the left. Uh, City now just... How much did you pay for Doku? Controlling. Uh, they paid, I want to say, like 60 million. 50 to 60 yeah, million. It's been a disappointment for the price that you paid. So he's only young. He's, he's, he's got, he's got, he's got the, he's got the him, potential. Yeah. He just needs that end product. He's, everything else in his game is very good. He just needs that end product. Yeah. His movement, his ball distribution, his skills, his pace, everything is there. Uh, Seamus Holland is still on the pitch. That's not the best of passes well. from a Kanji looking for uh, for Jack Grealish. Can't find him. And a change of boots coming in here. Is it Mateta that's changing his boots? I'm not sure. Never really got the fad with football players you no know, cutting the socks. Uh, ease the pressure, I think. You know, injuries and things. Just to ease the circulation side of things. I think that's why they do it. I think that's why you know on the car. <laughs> blood, I think it's all to it's all yeah. to do with blood flow. There is a reason why. I mean, Jack Jack Grealish wears his socks right down, doesn't exactly. he? Exactly, he wears it like that. He wears them right. Do people wear them different ways? I mean, some players um, have the socks right up past the knees that go right up, so it looks like they're wearing pants. Rodri's a traditional football player, shirt tucked in, yeah, no. socks where they always are. You know what I mean? very, traditional, yeah. very traditional. The other thing they like is the black boots. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can just picture him, can't you, with yeah. the orange football made of leather, black boots on, passing it round. <laughs> he's quality though, isn't he? I think he's Premier League Player of the Year. I think he's outstanding, Rodri. Oh, amazing player. He's just... He just has that knack as well of getting those big goals when you need him. He's just he's just awesome. There's just, I just yeah. don't think there's any weakness to him. Because no, he has that Thunderbolt as well. It's just everything, yeah. isn't he? And Julia makes a good point. There's no socks big enough for Jack and his calves, his massive his calves. Massive calves yeah. His calves are huge. <laughs> no skipping like day there. <laughs> <laughs> Just look how low his socks are. Oh, <laughs> Here's Oscar Bob <laughs> into the penalty yeah, area. Corner, no. he, he's, uh, you can't find the pass either. Just surrounded out. Uh, Palace could maybe have a bit of uh, a bit of leeway here. Eze trying to get uh, Palace further up the field, and they've done well. Um, Gavardio, I presume Gavardio has just been taken off because we've not really rotated the defence. He had a yellow card. I also didn't think he was playing particularly I think, yeah. well. I mean, there's just a, three reasons yeah. there that's all combined to say we'll take him off. But you can notice the difference. You look a lot yeah. more comfortable. Oh, 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 De Bruyne. De Bruyne. It's deep, very deep. Finds Oscar Bob at the, uh, On the right. back of the area. Finds Johnny Stones. Stones. Here's a Kanji now to De Bruyne. Here's Grealish. Back to KDB. He's got one Thunderbolt. Mm. Tries to get another. Not quite. That's what I'd like to see Man City do more of. Shoot. Yeah. There's one now. 40 likes away. We're getting there. 40 likes away from 100 likes. Guys, get them likes up. I think City, City just got to persevere. They've got to keep keep going with this intensity. I think if they can keep going yeah. with this intensity, just keep going, try and get that third goal. There is, the a, league, there, there, yeah. is a, there is a third in this for City. Because I just I still like to see Man City go out, try and get that goal difference down. Yeah, as I said, you can't really think about Real know, Madrid. You can't really think about it. It's just too dangerous. So with this, just win the game. I think if City get a third, you'll start to see some changes. I think you'll see your Kovacic's and your yeah. your Nunez's potentially coming on. I, th I, th I presume that City don't really want to bring Bernardo or Foden on if they can help it. 
they're the two main players that they want to give a rest for because they've started against Arsenal. They've played during the international break and they've played and they started against Aston Villa. So they can't, they don't, they, they need to find that balance. The only player that's not had the balance is Rodri. And I'm amazed that. It shows you what such a key player he is to you. They just, uh, he just seems to do, does he do like 60 games a season? It's amazing. I mean, I've got to be impressed with that, especially his fitness levels to actually do 60 games with you. Or even 50 hard. And he does international duty with Spain. Yeah. Just doesn't need rest. Is Alvarez now to That's Oscar much. Bob. Uh, cross comes in, looking for Haaland and doesn't quite fall City's way. I think the big problem we've got... I said another big problem with Haaland is I think a lot of the Premier League defenders have just kind of sussed that you've just got to hang tight to Haaland. you are trying to man-mark him out It's of one the of game. those, yeah, because after a season you do, you get like sussing him out. And uh, teams are just happy to take one of their defenders and just say, your job today to do nothing else other than you sit tight to Erling Haaland. Uh, Rene, goal came for Rico Lewis, the second goal for City. Okay, quite nice and early. Oh, no. no. I hope not a commentator's curse. Rodri goes down. The bottom of his boots are black. <laughs> Have a look. He just steps. Oh, a nasty one right on his metatarsal. <laughs> Bit of a nasty one, that one. Hopefully it's just uh, a sore one and he'll just uh, get... You know, give it a rub and he'll yeah. be okay. Mateta goes into the book for it. It was nasty. Studs over the top and uh, goes into the book. As I said, hopefully Rob, uh, Rodri will just be able to give it a bit of a rub and uh, he'll be able to get back up on his feet and uh, up and going. In the meantime, Crystal Palace are going to prepare themselves a substitution and Man City are going to take that opportunity here just to have a little drinks break as our Crystal Palace just have a bit of a rest. Whilst uh, Rodri just gets a little bit of treatment. Hopefully nothing more. Rodri uh, is back up on his feet and seems to be moving okay. So it's just felt like it's a bit of a sore one. You know, someone goes over the top of the ball and onto the top of your uh, top of your foot, near your ankle. Be a bit of a sore one. Metatarsal made famous for David Beckham, wasn't it? No one had ever heard of the yeah, Metatarsal Metatarsal until uh, 2002, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Is it two, not 2006? Is it 2004? When was it? Let's have a look. David Beckham. I'll have a look in a sec. Yeah, ball goes out of play. And I'll have a look. David Beckham Meta. I spell it Met. A R. A Meta. Is it that? There we go. Metatarsal. When was it? Breaks his metatarsal bone. 2002. Spot on. Look at that. 2002. I'm a man of facts. I get it right. <laughs> the meta no one's heard of a metatarsal no. before. I know Ben Rooney had it, didn't he? I think it's the Euros in the run-up to that. Or is it 2006? It might well have been. What, it's to, Eze comes off and uh, Jeffrey Schlupp comes on. Uh, that's a good... I think, is that 2004? Wayne Rooney got sent off in 2006 with that incident yeah. with Cristiano Ronaldo. I think it's 2004, but he came back in time. For God's sake... Now we've got to look at Wayne Rooney when he's one more. <laughs> metatarsals now. <laughs> so it was shows... famous. Everyone knows what a metatarsal <laughs> is now because of it. 2006. 2006, May. Yeah, that one wrong. There you go. 2006. <laughs> oh, the golden generation of England that promised so much and just couldn't get Ooh, past the so quarterfinal. So that's an interesting conversation then. Go on. What do you think of this England team now? Uh, I think the strength of the other teams around them aren't as good, which is making England look better. And I look at England's team and I think that England uh, should be doing better with the players that they've got available to them. I think a semi is a success. I think quarterfinals will be disappointing. Ball comes into the box, headed clear by Palace. Um, I mean, bar France... Yeah, Germany just have that factor that they're the home, they're the they're home not, team. They're not bar that. I mean, I look, Portugal's got a decent team. Yeah, I always want to watch out for them, the Portuguese. Um, Italy's Italy. But Italy's not qualified. Not... I wonder when I'll do not <laughs> Italy aren't... Uh... The hosts. Are they? The, Is sorry. that right? Italy aren't in the European Championships, are they? I'm sure, it, I'm sure they're qualified, Italy. I think I'm right. I think Italy did... Qualify. There was a competition they didn't qualify for. Was it the World Cup? World Cup they didn't, yeah. 
I know there's in big danger the this one, the Euro. I'm sure they're qualified. Did they? Let's have a look. Oh yeah, they yeah. have qualified. Yeah. Fake news. Fake news from me. Uh, Seamus, Southgate's a blade. Southgate's the weakness, yeah. <laughs> oh, of course, you can't rule out Belgium, can you? Always got a few. Points. De Bruyne squares it across! Yeah! There's the third! Yes, Has Holland. to be Erwin Haaland! It'll feel better. Has a tap in for Manchester City. And he's not even celebrating Erwin Haaland, he's just like, yeah. Same with Man right. City, they're not really. Yeah, they're not really, not really yeah. celebrating. Yeah, it's a dude from Manchester City. And uh, Manchester City now. Hopefully, three goals looking good for the win, but there is still a job to be done. Make sure everyone's Keep on going. side here. Let's have a look. Mm. Tight one. Just have to see the lines. Uh, Haaland's in the right place, so it's good movement from Erling Haaland. We, we spoke before about Erling Haaland being at his best when he's playing off the off the shoulder of the defence. He's also at his very best when he's in that six-yard box and the ball's presented to him to be in the right place at the right it time. I said it. numerous times last season that Erling Haaland, it's, you say oh, he's a tapping merchant, but it's a talent to be in the right place at the right time. A poacher. It's a poacher's goal for Manchester City. As I said, just uh, checking the offside. That'll make Haaland feel much better. It explain a lot about the Man City reaction. Just uh, having a final check here. It'd be good if we could see a replay or something just to make a. I think they should be made to do a replay. No, on the big screen. Yeah. On the ground. It should be made to have a look. I think gold's been given. Yeah, gold's been given. 3 1. So it is 3 1 Manchester City. As I said, it's a bit. The Premier League's got a lot to sort out when it comes to offside. Not showing people in the stadium what's happening yeah. and the checks uh, and TV there. We've not seen any any replays or anything. We've not seen any lines being drawn. We don't know what decisions VAR are making. And I can promise you right now, we'll get to the European Championships in the summer and everything will run yeah. as smooth as you like. I remember when they did it in Russia, they had it absolutely bob on. I thought, wow, this is quite good. I don't recall any controversies for officiating in uh, Qatar either. No. The ball comes across here from City and City are hungry for a fourth. They'll be pushing now City, I think, next couple of minutes yeah. to try and get another goal. That will seal the deal and that will allow City to rotate. I mean, if you could get 5-1. Try and... <laughs> Go top! Exactly. I don't know if you've got more goals, whether that had uh, top Liverpool. I'm not sure. Let's have a look at the full Premier League table. So that shows you that we're comfortable here, three one city. That we've been looking at that. Uh, goals oh, yeah. score. Yeah, yeah. So Man City will go top if they score two more goals and don't concede. So you've leveled Liverpool now. Nadir going. says that yeah, City go above Liverpool if we score two more. So that you've was... got to keep an eye on the goal difference, you exactly. do. Yeah, yeah. It's mentality, it's what it's all about. Especially in sports, it's all about psychology as well. Mm. Playing those mind at, games. At, right at the very top. Yes. It is. I think that's what Arsenal were trying to do to City. That's why they've gone for that nil-nil. I think mentally we're just trying to tell ourselves we I keep losing to Pep and Man City at the Etihad Stadium. We need to stop. I thought it was a weak mentality. Though. I, I still think it's a weak mentality not to have a pop at City and yeah. try and win the game. Well, at the very least, let's have a go at you. Yeah. It, you want to be the best. You need to beat the best, not not yeah. draw. But the Arsenal fans will say we beat you at the Emirates Stadium. They beat us at the Emirates Stadium. Yeah. They did. Uh, but at the Etihad... Is what I'm on about. Pull back, Rodri. De Bruyne. Yes! 4 1. City turning it up. I don't need to do any commentary. We've got Aaron here. Now, great this is more like it from Manchester City. Whatever Pepper said at half time, especially with Kenji coming on. Man City look more comfortable. This is Manchester City. They look fantastic. They're sending down the goal. They're saying to Manchester, uh, saying to Liverpool and Arsenal, we are there. Because we are there in the background. You better watch out for us. And it puts all the pressure now onto Liverpool away at United tomorrow. Puts all the pressure. Again, is there an offside in this build up? I don't want it. So they're flirting with these offsides, aren't they? Good grief. It's a great finish. It's a great finish. It's another good, great uh, finish from De Bruyne. It's been unusual because City haven't been at their slick best. We've been far from our best yet. We're winning 4 1. Well, maybe it's starting to turn now. Starting to tick. Back to back four, yeah. 
just starting to tick. Business so through the legs ticking, there of yeah. Wharton and into the back of the net. Good, good finish from KDB. Really good finish. 100th goal for Man City for Kevin De Bruyne. Just uh, making sure, see if the, yeah, the goal has been given for Manchester City. So it is 4-1. Uh, I think I'd start making the changes now for Real Madrid. Poznan erupts <laughs> in the away end for Manchester City. And you tell me your fans don't remember Bobby Mike? Of course they do, the Poznan. As hey, here come volume. the subs. Nunes yeah. and Kovacic. You said that, didn't you? Yeah. I mean, Don't how old, big play, yeah. Do you know, how old would people be if you were like four or five years old in 2011 under Mancini? How old would they be now? They'd be like, they'll left school and they won't remember Yaya Torre. It is. Like, when we're <laughs> spin, <laughs> so blows my mind. When speaking to you about pressing like that, there's a generation that have never seen us in a championship playoff. It blows my mind. Now, that blows my mind. It makes me feel old. It makes you feel really old. It's like when I talk to some North Ender, they don't recall our Billy Davis area. It feels so old. They don't know what I'm talking about. You've never seen us our greatest moments. As that was a team. So Kovacic and Nunes are coming on. I'm wondering who's going to come off. Rodri's got to be one of them. It's got to be. Who's the other? That's the question. It's not like that. Like some of these youngsters are going to high school now, eleven years old. Like never saw that like, Sergio Aguero go because he wasn't born. Sorry, there's people going into high school who've never seen. They weren't born when Aguero scored. Wow. I need to one minute. Yeah. I need to think about things here. Ireland pull back. Oh. City look. It looks so much more dominant down that left hand side, and it's really telling. Shows you the difference with Kanji, like playing with Grealish, and it's just. Interconnecting well. Do you want, I wonder KDB. if it's just defensively the players feel like they can get forward because you've got a Kanji. Yeah. I've, I've got him there. He will cover me. It's because Palace have not done anything. They don't look a threat at City all. City have looked yeah. so much better. So much better. I mean, we're playing with uh, Alvarez and Haaland. Yeah, we're linking it up really around, well. Yeah. Really good combinations. Getting the best out of De Bruyne. You know, settling with a Kanji. So it's been, it's been good stuff from City. It's been a really good response, second half. Rodri is going to be the player that comes off for Kovacic. No surprise there. City are going to spend the next 18 minutes thinking about Real Madrid. Uh, Mateus Nunes is also going to come on. I presume this would be for John Stone. Oh, no, bringing off uh, Julian Alvarez. I'd have took John Stones off. You know, just uh, I said, I'm not sure I'd start Stones against Madrid, but it'd be good to have that option. I don't think I'd give yeah. him 90 minutes here, but here we are. So Alvarez comes off and Nunes comes on. It'd be really good, really good to see Mateus Nunes get a goal for Manchester City. Uh, Seamus, I think I'd go with Edison if he's fit for Madrid. Distribution's going to be key, so I'd go with him. Uh, Palace going to make a couple of changes for themselves. If you feel like this game's gone from the Jordan Ayew's going to come off. Uh, at least he's going to come on. Restless, spot on. We are going into Real Madrid with confidence. And 100 goals for Kevin De Bruyne as well. And have a look, see if we've got a score update. Uh, yeah, got, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> I'll just have a quick, I'll just have a quick Still look. Still 1-0 Norwich. Still 1-0 Norwich. I think team news has come out for all the 3pm games now. I'll have a look at pressing the line up the way. So substitutions. Are you Matata Mitchell all coming off for Crystal Palace and Elise Edouard and Klein all coming on? It's not a bad bench, is it? No. It's not a bad bench. Oscar Bob gives it to De Bruyne. Back to Oscar, Oscar Bob. They've worked on something. They've worked on something here. Oscar Bob. Squares it across, laid Ooh, off. Right. Grealish has a shot, Ooh. falls nicely here to Ruben Diaz. He squares mm. it. I'd like to see Diaz just put his foot across that there. There's plenty of players forward that if there's a, to be a ricochet, yeah. a rebound or a save be made or something, there are plenty of players there ready to follow that up. Because you're capable of doing it. They are, yeah. 38 lines, guys, away from 100 lines. Any help towards that would be great. Do check out today's video, sponsor Sofa Score. Links and details there in the description. And don't forget to subscribe as well. Remember, we will be having another live watch along again Tuesday evening. It's Real Madrid against Manchester City in the Champions League quarter final. Uh, so I will see you guys for that. 
And uh, you'll be seeing Aaron mixed here. Next up on the channel will be the uh, return match of the Champions League against well. Real Madrid. Really looking forward to that as a neutral. Third, third time lucky. We've got yeah. tickets for Finally it. Finally done it. Been lucky enough to get those tickets. Had tickets to go during the COVID season when we faced Real Madrid in the last 16. Game never happened, so we never got to go. And it was played behind closed doors for the second leg. City went through. Um, season, uh, a couple of seasons after, uh, last season, didn't manage to get tickets. I, I never attempted tickets for the season before that. Attempted tickets last season. Uh, was unsuccessful due to the ticket fiasco of uh, putting it on open sale for everybody to be able to get a ticket. Yeah. Mental decision. And then, finally, uh, put criteria in place this year. And, huh, would you believe it, managed to get tickets. Let them learn. Andrew, spot on. It's just been a complete dominant performance from City. We need... Need we're four one up here with fourteen minutes remaining. We go top with a win and winning by four. We are in a position to win by four. Yeah. Can get that fifth. I don't want Man City to start thinking about Real Madrid and start coasting energy. The main players that will be starting that we can't cope without are either already off the pitch or haven't started this game. So there's no reason why City can't keep pushing and keep going here to win by four and go top. Psychologically, it's a huge... It's demoralising. It's demoralising that yeah. Liverpool, their goal difference goes. It's demoralising. Arsenal know that Man City, we're playing catch-up on their goal difference and we're two points ahead of them, which means they've got to beat Brighton. Got to. That's the important part here, is you must do that. You've got to do it. Here's Grealish. Goes down and under a challenge. Said, that's free not kick. going to be an easy game at all, Brian. The no no. Looks. Here's Stones. Gives the ball to Oscar Bob. Back to John Stones. Here's uh, Mateus Nunes. Nunes. Now he goes down. That'll be a free kick for Manchester City. City just choose to take it quick. Here's De Bruyne. I'd have liked to have seen City take the time and just put a ball into the box there. Excuse me. Here is Nunes. Gets up ahead of the steam and uh, puts his foot right under that. I like seeing that scratch of the pulling there. Oh, yeah. Scratch off the map. There it is. <laughs> My camera don't get to see it, so let me just uh, pivot it. You won't be able to see it. It's just there on the door. Ah, but what a day it was. Absolutely crazy. Done in a day. Done in a day. It's a Cornwall and back. What time did we get back? Did we get back? Got back just before one. I wasn't back for midnight, was I? No, I think we just failed, I think. We fell short by less... It was less than an hour, but we fell short. We needed... Uh... No, we definitely beat the one o'clock. Yeah. That's crazy. That was a good day. That's a good day. That's why you come on these away days, isn't it? You'll never ever see this with Man City. Uh, it's not impossible unless you're prepared to pay over the odds. There's, there's recently yeah. uh, been a, a Man City channel, uh, a, a young American girl running it. That's caused a lot of controversy. So she's gone on for some reason. This this young lady's yeah. decided to go on to a TikTok account and has decided to start speaking about can you name these players and she made a comment so a picture came up of Sergio Gomez and they asked who's this she doesn't know which is upset Man City fans uh, you've got a current player in the current squad she's a Man City fan and she doesn't know who he is oh it gets better and uh, she said she only <laughs> knows current players not old past players she doesn't think it's her job to know who people are in the past only in the in, in who's there in the present that's relevant <laughs> she's gone to the Etihad Stadium doing a camera apparently yeah. she's got a big camera and it's been like it's been causing an obstruction she's been making comments she's walking around the concourse so she said here's what it's like she's done a video title of here's what it's like for an American in Manchester going to a Man City game and uh, uh, Crystal Palace are in here and a great block comes in from City to stop conceding. Uh, Palace nice should have scored. Yeah, the mistake's still there. The mistake's still there. 
<laughs> Ruben Diaz, I think this uh, was it. A kanji? Who was it? It was. I'm oh, sorry. It was a kanji. Kanji that was caught square. It was great defending from Diaz and John Stones. Actually, it's a kanji this time. I said how much more settled we looked. Yeah. Uh, with a kanji, it's really good defending, desperate defending, but good defending. And still, City are not getting that ball clear. Eventually, they will get it clear. Kanji just finds De Bruyne and little flicks going on. There's too many little flicks too going many, on. Yeah. They're pressing here, Palace. Look for space. Just get the ball clear. Shot comes in straight to Ortega. Yeah, so this this, this lady's continued and uh, she, she said that all the, the things are being said to her and it's, it's upset quite a few Man City fans, regular going, match, match going, Manchester City fans. Um, and she's been putting it out online and things and she's made some comments. Anyway... People have got wind that she's been getting tickets. I don't think it's too much of a problem at the Etihad because um, tickets are available. As long as you're a member, uh, you, you'll be able to get tickets for, for most games. You might struggle a little bit with the bigger games. You might need a bit yeah. of criteria. But if you're a regular, regular going fan, you should be able to get tickets for stuff, which is how it should be as far as I'm concerned. De Bruyne has gone down feeling his hamstring here, which was his groin. His hamstring's not good. Anyway, this young lady, she's claimed through a supporters group coming in from America, not got many fans at all. So she's cottoned on that you can apply as part of a member as a supporters group for away tickets. And as long as applications are coming in, you will get tickets for things. And she's cottoned on and she's managed to get tickets for Liverpool away. I'm fairly sure she's got tickets for Nottingham Forest away. Apparently now she's part of the supporters group uh, for Milton Keynes because she's now living in the United Kingdom. Um, but yeah, she's just been getting tip more and more tickets. It's upset a lot of Man City regular going match day fans that they can't get tickets for Liverpool away. And this yeah. American lady who doesn't know who Sergio Gomez is with a camera right in front row is at Liverpool away. It's caused a lot of controversy. A lot of controversy. She played the system. So she's played the system, but the system's broken. I could have told you that from last year. The season ticket price rise, match day prices going up, uh, members not having criteria for the big games and stuff. There's a lot that Manchester City, in terms of their tickets, just don't get right. And as far as I'm concerned, uh, supporters groups, I think, are a really good idea, and I see why they do that. Uh, I just think there's a lot of emphasis put on supporters group, in particular with away match tickets. Good to remember. I think so, anyway. Yeah. Because people just pick and choose. The all these supporters groups around the world. You saw it in Istanbul. Supporters groups from that have never people going to Istanbul from India and Bangladesh that have never been to Manchester that have never been to a Man City game before, who were getting tickets for Istanbul. And I think City need to get the criteria sorted from that aspect that loyalty is rewarded. And I think people feel like their loyalty isn't rewarded from a uh, point point of yeah. view. I'm never going to get to any Man City away games on point. Not going to happen. Impossible. Not one Premier League game this season's come off season ticket sale. Yet there's numerous season ticket holders that aren't getting tickets for away yeah. matches. Yet people uh, are never going to a Man City game are now getting tickets. Which I think is a great shame. And I think it's just... It's, it's everything to me points towards, and City fans won't like this, it points towards one thing. The ballot. The ballot. The ballot. Which will then lead to ticket touting. I'm going to apply in the ballot. I don't want to go, but I'll get a ticket and I'll be able to sell it for big money. Our match at the Etihad against Liverpool, I can sell them tickets for £280. Match that we're going against Real Madrid, I can sell them tickets for £300 if I want to. It's not a thing Man City can do about it. They say with the Euros, don't you? Yeah. I mean, luckily enough, we it's Come just it's get, yeah. the, 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 it's just ridiculous. So it's not just football that's guilty of this. Go say as you get the concerts. Do you know why? Do you know why uh, Real Madrid away has gone to member sale? They do something that's quite smart. Write your name on the ticket. They're strict. If your passport doesn't match and they see that it's been tipexed or altered in any way, they do. I've heard the stories. They refuse your entry. You're not allowed in. People know that from last season, so they decided this season. They're not sure they want to go. And with the expensive flight prices, all of a sudden people are saying, I don't fancy it. As yeah. I said, if we had money, we'd be going to Madrid. Oh, yeah. We would. Because to me, following football, that to me is what it's all about. It's watching your it team is. live in action. 
And I would recommend anybody that's watching this from around the world, you'll love watching Manchester City. If you're fortunate enough to be in the position, come to England, watch Manchester City in action. It's a brilliant goal, that, for Crystal Palace. Nice little ball played in and a flick on there from Ed, uh, from, from Edouard. Uh, and that does Man City's goal difference no favours. Man City just falling asleep, coasting. The coasting. Exactly, yeah. So Palace coasting. have actually pushed up because you're coasting. And do you know what? <laughs> You're not good at it. I know, yeah, we've been shot in the foot again through coasting. But these goal dif- they, that goal could be the difference at the end of the season. I know. Very disappointing. A game that you should win by three, you win by two. Someone said 4-2 before, do you remember, at the they beginning did. of the stream? <laughs> That's spot on. Um, there's still four minutes remaining still in this game. Minutes, this yeah, game, this game's not careful, done. Yeah. If, if uh, Palace grab another goal in the next four minutes, this game's not done. We've just got to be careful. Bit of game management now. Just see it out. Three points, 4-2. Man City haven't created any opportunities since they scored the, the fourth. fourth. No. They've just no, been you, coasting. You've been coasting, yeah. And then you brought on your two subs. And then it's just take this thing away. And they're on about bringing on Sergio Gomez. I'd, I, don't, I think I'd hold that sub. I'd just leave it as it is. I'd hold it. I'd just say, no, no, not not worth the risk. Maybe 90th minute, if you see how long it's been added on, yeah. and you see it's like four minutes, and you think, you know what, yeah. But even so, what's the point for four minutes? I saved their legs for four minutes. Anyway, the don't forget, leave a thumbs up, guys. Uh, do subscribe. Do check out today's video sponsor. So, score links and details there in the description. That's not a good pass from City. Palace have committed. Look, they've got six players forward. There's six players forward for Palace. Why wouldn't they? What have they got to lose? And here they are in the penalty area. Jack Grealish does ever so well. Ever so well. Finds his pass to Haaland as well. Here's Nunes. This is... The second half's been better from City. It's not been anywhere near our best performance this season. But I was speaking the other day about Liverpool. They're not playing particularly well. What they are doing winning. is winning. These guys still don't think they're as strong as what they were either. No, like the 18 19 mm. you, you, We're at a point where we know that we don't have to play anybody in the top four now this season. <laughs> so we don't have to hit. The heights. What, what, what's that difficult games that we've got left? Away against Spurs? Oh, yeah, I've beat a team in top four apart from United. No one. Oh, yeah. I'm on about the big the big big six. Yeah. When it's come to the big six, City's form's I know not mean, been yeah, great. Which includes Chelsea and all that rubbish. Chelsea. But that's just it. Chelsea, I don't think, are rubbish. I just think they're very inconsistent. Yeah. They've gone... Uh, They've got it in them to score goals and cause team problems. They've just not got the consistency They're or just the players. Awful in defence. But they have that little bit of quality, and I think if Chelsea could find a bit of consistency, they could easily make top six. Certainly top seven. That's a great ball in. And that nearly was a goal, guys. That wasn't far well, away. That's a really good cross. That wasn't far Inches away. Are. I think that's probably going to be the game. That isn't far away. That will be the game, but that isn't far away. Andrew says, still can't manage a game. Yeah, City aren't that great managing games at all. It doesn't suit Man City to uh, sit off opposition. It's not who you are. <laughs> Why is there a random guy... With a megaphone orchestrating <laughs> around 20 people. Because he went to one European game, he saw it in Italy or like Germany with the microphones. Why is Bernardo Silva coming on? Why is Bernardo Silva coming on? Can somebody please answer as to why on earth, going into added time, we are winning by two, we play Real Madrid in three days. Is Bernardo Silva coming onto the pitch? He's only coming on if 10 minutes is added on right now. I reckon he's putting... <laughs> I wonder if he's doing a tactical masterclass here. Don't substitute if they don't play. Because they've had all the calorie intakes and the preparations for the game. Don't they have to go out there for an extra half an hour and burn it all off? They have to do all the run and go through the exercises. Whereas the players that are featured in the match yeah. don't have to. I don't know if Bernardo, if he comes on the pitch... 
doesn't have to do seven that. Minutes. Seven minutes being added on. I don't understand why Bernardo is coming on. Pep is Pep. I'm not going to sit here and question the greatest of all time, but I am going to question as to why Bernardo's coming onto this pitch. Well, we have a transfer policy with the corner. Is that a Man City top in the Palace end from that kid then? <laughs> for God's sake. Brentford's rife for that kind of thing oh, as you well. Make it, you're making it, bro. We'll never see this. Rife. One of these days, I'll see a Man City top in the Deepdale in the home end. Yeah, you will. I've not seen one yet. No, but it'll happen. And the shot comes in from That's Palace and a save from Ortega. I just... Dave, you spot on. 4 2 is better than a 3 1 win. It is. In terms of the goals scored, it is better. And I preferred the it goal difference. Just manage to sound, make sure it doesn't go 4 yeah. 3. Oh, oh, Whoa. oh. De Bruyne. For a hat trick. Oh, heavy, oh, it's heavy touch. touch and the foul comes in. Did get a corner. Oh, that was a foul. So it does allow Man City to waste a little bit of time here up at the Palace end. Fair credit though, it's because even at 33, I'm having a burst of energy there. And here he is. So De Bruyne is coming off and Bernardo's coming. I just don't understand why Bernardo Silva's coming onto the pitch. There, there must be some kind of like simple reason. There must be. There has to be. I must be missing something. As I said, all I can think of is maybe the Bernardo doesn't have to go through as vigorous of a warm down. A, is it cool? What's it called? A cool down. Cool down. A cool, cool down. Cool. As I said, the players on the bench have had their calorie intake. They yeah. have to burn that energy off, which means they've got to, if you've been on the bench all game, at the end of the game that you see off camera, the players have to come off the bench. They won't be in the dressing room. They'll do their... They'll burn that energy off. Is that where they hit the gym after the game? Like, like no... Like a cool-down session, no, like... 30 You'll see players time. running up and down, up and down, up and down. They don't do it for do very they long. They on the sidelines. They're, they're, they're some, they're, 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 each team, I think, have their own different uh, warm-ups and doing it. So City's got their own gym inside the yeah. stadium and stuff, so I'd have thought that City would do it off-camera and in the background. Maybe Palace don't have it and uh, they'll say, recommend them staying on the pitch and they'll just have to do all the, the running and everything to burn it off. It's because they're not going to favour you, are they? You're the way team. And that's all I can think of as to why Bernardo's coming. So it doesn't, it doesn't have to be as relentless for him. That's all. That's literally all I can think of. I can't think of any other reason why. Can you? Why you'd put him on the pitch and you run run him the risk of any kind of injury? Injury, yeah. yeah. The point is, we didn't play Bernardo today because we want to rest him. Save him for Real Madrid. To save him for Real Madrid. <laughs> Watch him not start against Real Madrid. <laughs> <laughs> About what? <laughs> please, please don't overthink it, Pep. <laughs> Do you know what? A really negative line. Do you know what? My fear is us playing Barcelona in the Champions League final and Pep Guardiola oh, severely yeah. overthinking Barcelona because he's so respectful of them. He loves them so much. I'm going to show him serious respect and we're going to have to do something to counteract and I'm going to change up how we play. And then you see him at the end pull out Barcelona at all. <laughs> Barcelona beat you. <laughs> Pep says before the game, he says, win-win for me. I even win the Champions League when my team does. I don't want to play Barcelona for that reason. Yeah. I'm happy to play Real Madrid. You know if mean. Pep doesn't like Real Madrid, I'm happy to play him. Yeah, so you I don't want that sentimental up. factor for, for no. Pep. I want purely business, purely work. I would say you will be facing Barcelona is group stage. The, Even then. Yeah, yeah. I don't think Pep would be as unprofessional to suggest that he's, he, you know, he's Mr. Barcelona, that he'd do anything. And what I do think is he'd overthink it. I think he'd be very respectful of Barca. And I think the best way to play against Barca would be to not respect them at all. That's what we do against Real Madrid, and it works. It's the best way, yeah. It's the best way. It works. You just don't show him any respect. It's like you, you hammered it there. Yeah, the same with Bayern Munich. Yeah, you just don't show respect to them. You can be too respectful in the Champions League. I mean that's been our, I think that's been 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 our biggest error. I think it's your biggest error that you did in the Premier League. No, like Liverpool, just too respectful. Uh, Anthony says good win, bit edgy at times, but we'll take it. Don't push Kevin De Bruyne too hard. I I agree. There's been spells where City have been very good. There's been positives here. 
There's been some there's negatives been... as well. I was going to say, Kevin De Bruyne has done his bit. I was going to say, I just want to be, be a Bernardo that I bring on as that salt. No. Uh, Jefferson Lerma has gone down. I think he's holding his head. Erlin Haaland's just rolling around. Just, just, just tutting, isn't he? Tutting away. Can't tutting believe away. It. Tutting away. Uh, right, T.O. guys, I'm going to do my outro because I'm going to end the uh, live stream upon the full-time whistle. I'm going to do my match review for you guys. So, thank you very much for tuning in and watching. We will be back again for the live watch on Tuesday night of Real Madrid against Manchester City. I will see you guys for that. Uh, if you are new around here, please do subscribe if you haven't done so already. It does help to support the future content created here on my channel and keeps the growth coming on the channel as well. Also, don't forget social media links. They're in the description if you want to go and follow me on my Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Email also in the description too if you want to hit me up for any sponsorships or any videos or any general business inquiries. Don't forget as well to uh, leave your thoughts in the comments below if you're watching this after the game. I'll just get your final full-time thoughts in on the live chat right now. Also, don't forget as well to check out today's video sponsor, which is brought to you by SofaScore. Links and details, they are in the description, also in the live chat, and you can also use as well uh, the QR code on screen. That would be much appreciated. Uh, and thank you to everybody that has downloaded SofaScore. Remember, SofaScore will keep you up to date with all the latest scores from around the grounds for you guys to enjoy. It's a very highly rated app. It is free. And anyone that does download SofaScore using my link does help to support the future content created here on the JSGC channel. I do want to take this time to say thank you very much, Aaron. For very welcome. Joining yeah, me thank today. you for having me on. I've been uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. Not a problem, as I I'm said. I'm happy to see you in, so we're all happy. Yeah. Especially you're, you're, the you. good, you're the good luck charm. <laughs> I'm I'm bring you back. Every time. <laughs> get him back. He needs to be on every stream. Bring him back. <laughs> so from Champions League to winning against Palace. Here we are. Uh, and I bring the vibes. Yeah, Aaron will be back again for uh, the <laughs> match vlog, it will be. A bit match vlog, yeah, again. Oh, Grealish in the penalty Come area. On. Grealish! Uh, didn't get it right, didn't but I'll be back yes, for right. the match vlog against Manchester City versus Real Madrid for his second leg. Yep, looking forward to that from the Etihad. Thank you very much, Anthony, for your kind comment. Thank you to everybody for tuning in. And uh, we're through the seven minutes because of that little uh, head injury. We've got around a minute left of the game. Uh, game is spent. Manchester City are going to win this game. We're not going to go top today. We're two goal difference behind Liverpool. Liverpool there play is. Manchester United tomorrow. Uh, so we've got that to look forward to. And we also have uh, Arsenal playing Brighton away from home later on as well. Thank you very much, Dad, for tuning in. There is the yep, full-time whistle. Have a nice day, Dad. Manchester City do win this game. And Manchester City make it back-to-back -back wins and ideal preparation. And now... We can start thinking about Real Madrid. Real Madrid. So I'll see you all for my match review. I've been JSGC. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Peace. Ciao for now. I'll just roll my uh, sofa score video, and we will end things right there.